Hope coming down here to meet me wasn't too inconvenient for you, Hoshino-san. I'm Senda from Bato Detective Agency. Uh, so, you were kind of vague on the phone. What were you trying to get at? You really don't know what this is about? Rocking those shades at this time of night is telling me a different story, son. Mark of a guilty conscience. I assure you that's not the case. Anyway, what did you want to discuss? It's what I was telling you over the phone. We got a request from Saori Shirasaki to look into you, but I figured I'd do you a solid and let you see what I found before I reported back to my client. Yeah, but what's this? <laughs> you don't recognize your girl? We snapped a quick pic when she came to the office. No way. Why would Sauri, son? Way I hear it, you two are getting engaged soon, so you can finally tie the knot. But sometimes, women get cold feet, you know? They just want to know what they're getting into. I see it all the time. You... Okay, then. So, what did you find, sir? I haven't done anything that would incriminate me. And this is a violation of detective client privilege. You're breaking the rules. Oh, no, that's a pretty good one. As I'd expect from a lawyer. But Hoshino, you really think you can bluff your way out of this shot? Uh, oh. Well, well, well. I do believe that's you strolling out of a Kamurocho love hotel, Slugger. Uh, One last fling before the big day? Uh, <laughs> Hope you made it worth your time. What? This is... You've got it all wrong! Whoa, whoa! Take it easy, would ya? Come on, Hoshino-san. We don't have to play by courtroom rules here. It's simple. I can make this whole thing disappear for you. Only reason lawyers don't go to hell is because they can afford not to. In other words, you're saying I have to pay you now to delete that picture? Nothing I love more than a fast learner, kid. Four million yen. This goes up in smoke, and the client never has to hear anything to the contrary. Four million yen? I don't have that kind of money! Your whole damn future is riding on this deal I'm making you. It's a small price to pay, isn't it? Yeah, but... Hey, Hoshino. Would you prefer that I send this to your office with a nice little bow? I... So, you take the client's money up front. Then you shake down the mark for another four million on top. Man, you corrupt detectives really rake it in, don't you? Who the fuck? Shit. You were... You were in the Matsugane. And you're Shiro Senda. You were a former lieutenant in the Bato family. And right now, you're on my turf. Kaito-san! That was my acting. Not bad if I say so myself. Huh? Acting? One of your old clients came to us to help her get her money back. As it turns out, your little extortion racket has been getting around. And that's why Hoshino-kun and Saori-san put together a three-act play that got us everything we need. All that's left to do is bag your ass with it. Ain't that right, Hoshino-kun? Yep. I got the whole thing on tape. Hey! Uh... All right. That'll be four million yen you took from your client. Plus 300,000 for annoying me. You need to hit an ATM? Get back here! You ain't getting away!
Good. Still in one piece. Ugh. Shit. Now then, send this on. Your office is in Kamurocho, right? How about you give me a little inside tour? Senda, the hell's this about? Boss, I... I kind of screwed up. I know you. You're with the Matsugane family. The name's Kaito, and I'm with the Yagami Detective Agency now. <laughs> you call this dump an office? It's got the scent of illicit Yakuza business all over it. You trying to scare your clients? I take it you're not one of those clients. What do you want? You the head honcho around here? Igarashi's the name. I'm the Bato Detective Agency's chief consultant. You mean the Bato family, right? Didn't you guys used to call yourselves the Tojo Clan R&D? You dig up dirt on cops and their families. All to twist the long arm of the law. Seems going legit hasn't taught you a damn thing. And it's making us real detectives look bad. That shit won't fly around me. Hate to burst your bubble, but we got a customer satisfaction rate of over 80%. So kindly take your bitching and blow it out your ass. Then why don't I cut to the chase? I'm here for the million yen you grifted out of my client. Plus, 300 grand for the trouble. Make it snappy, and I'll leave a souvenir. You're screwed more than sideways if the cops hear it. Send a you clusterfuck. <sighs> Real sorry. Well... I suppose I should give you credit for leading a competitor right to us. We can throw down, but fair warning, I'm tacking on extra for the ass whooping. All right, cut the yapping. Shut this idiot up permanently! Looks like our total comes out to one and a half million. Pretty lean for a business that was about to go under. 
You'll get yours someday, Kaito. Mark my words. <laughs> That's what they all say. I can't believe you got my money back from those crooks. How can I ever thank you? No need. I was just taking out the town garbage. Your husband wasn't even cheating on you, was he? No. But they still threatened to tell him I booked an investigation. Believe me, you're not alone here. There's been a recent uptick of con artists operating as detectives. See, normally, ex-Yakuza have to wait five years before they can open a detective business. So they'll often skirt the law by setting up a civilian to be the agency's owner. I see. Actually, I did find it strange how much cheaper they were than other agencies. Well, with the Yagami Detective Agency, we don't charge a yen until you see results. We're a name you can trust. So. Next time you need to keep tabs on your man, don't hesitate to swing on by. <laughs> I think I'll be fine for now. I've chosen to trust my husband, but thank you. By the way, Hoshinoku, how are things really going with Saori-san? As far as I'm concerned, I'm in it for the long haul. But sometimes I can't help but wonder if we're actually even together. You guys have been dating, what, three years? Never thought about getting hitched? Of course! At least, I, I have. As for whether Saori-san would be receptive to the idea... Uh... Come on, man. Doubton's only gonna drive her away. Show her you're a man with a plan. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'll make it happen this year. And I'll be rooting for you, pal. Great. Uh, on that note, I'd better get going. I still have some work left at the office. Looky here. It's talk. Good word, Kaito Anaki. Just thought you might want to go have a drink. Right now? Yeah, thing is, I kind of have a dinner meeting tonight. A dinner meeting? <laughs> Sounds pretty fancy for an arcade manager. Yeah, you're telling me. See, the thing is, we're opening up a new location in Eugene Show. Managed to hit it off with a guy who rents us our equipment. Turns out he's a CEO looking to invest. Whoa! So you'll be the owner of two arcades? Looks like it. Damn. Look at you moving up in the world. Yeah, well, to be honest, I'd rather knock one back with my Anaki. Nah, you do your thing. Some other time, okay? Sounds good, Anaki. Oh, almost forgot. I heard this from one of the part-timers at Charles, but apparently some kid came looking for you. Some kid? I guess. I wasn't the one who saw him. But evidently this punk had some fight in him. Our guys chased him out before he could start any shit. What the hell's a kid like that want with me? You tell me, man. But not right now. I, I gotta prep for that meeting.
Greetings. You've reached Yokohama 99. Yo, it's Kaito. Wanna go get drinks? You, me, and Sugiura? Ah, uh, I'm afraid Sugiura, she's not available. Right now, he's out looking into an affair. Huh. Okay, what about you? It's been a while, you know? Uh, well, I do appreciate the invite. Tonight's not good for me either. It's not? How come? Because tonight is reserved for anime. A very special one. It's the premiere of Love Star 3, the movie, Director's Cut Edition. <laughs> I can hardly contain myself. Oh, come on, an anime? Can't you just record the damn thing? I don't think you get it, Kaito-san. A premiere only happens once, and then it's history. You have to watch the stream while it's live and keep the chat turned on. That's the experience. Huh? You gotta do what now? Oh, I know. Kaito-san, if you like, I can add you to our Love Star community. That way we can voice chat online while you have your drink at home. It's a win-win. I'm sure my friends would love to welcome you. Yeah, Tsukumo, I don't know. This sounds like a lot to me. I think I'm gonna sit this one out. Gosh, I was just about to give you a breakdown on Love Star's deeper themes. Oh well. Oh, the stream's about to go live. Until uh, next time. Kaito-san? Is everything okay? Yeah, just thought we could grab a drink. Oh, well, uh, like I said before, I still have work to do. Hell, you're not done yet? Not even close. Plus, Saori-san needs my help after this, so... Yeah, I get it. Can't tear a man away from the love of his life. Something like that. Anyway, let's try some other time. Well, I could always show my face at Tender. Maybe I'll bump into someone I know. This right here. いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございます。
Oh my gosh, was someone murdered? Dunno. Could have been a Yakuza, maybe. But I thought the Tojo clan was long gone. Kaito-san, come join us. You by yourself? Yeah. Talks out of town helping Gendo-sensei. Says he'll be gone another couple days. Aha. Uh -huh. So is the sidekick getting lonely without the leading man? <laughs> In your dreams, Mari. Masuda, the usual. You see any shit going down outside? I overheard someone talking about a murder. Ah, that. Apparently, the victim was a young executive. Actually, there was a similar case a few days ago. It caused quite a stir. I believe the man was a CEO. Some killers out to eat the rich, huh? Who knows? Crazy world out there. Uh, speaking of which, did you finish the job I found you? Oh, I kicked the crap out of those swindlers. And Hoshino-kun put on quite the show. Really? I wish I could have seen the pros at work. No one else? I think Hoshino-kun and Saori-san are just about there. Fellow was all riled up, saying this'll be the year. By that, you mean they're tying the knot? Yeah. The question is, will Saori-san give him a yes? <laughs> I'd say she needs more time. If he rushes it, it might not turn out well. Yeah, I suppose your gut's usually right, Mari. What about you, Kaito-san? Any romance blooming in your life? <laughs> Whoa! Since when was this about me? <laughs> because... you clearly have no trouble talking to women, but I never hear what happens in the end. What happens in the end? is rejection. Yeah? Well, maybe I like being a free agent. You call it rejection. I call it release. And even if I do keep getting shot down, so what? Every beauty who walks away is only making room for the next one. <laughs> oh, Kaito-san. You're gonna grow into a lonely old man at this rate. Honestly, Mari, that's all talk. Once Kaido-san falls in love, he falls so hard he can't even see straight. Why, I recall a time he even considered getting married. You're kidding! Kaito-san, a husband? Yo, could we not go there? Oh, shoot, her name was on the tip of my tongue. I suppose it's been over a decade now. You two were living together, right? I think her name... Masada, look. That's a long story. Some other time, okay? Hmm? Oh. Sure thing. Uh, by the way, you got any more gigs? We've been dry thanks to those fake detectives, so if you could hook it up. Actually, that reminds me. A man came by asking about you. He said he was looking for someone. He wanted me? Specifically? I don't know the details, but he wants to meet you. He's the CEO of some tech company. Oh, a tech company, eh? What's the offer? He said he's prepared to pay two million up front. Two million? Well, well, that's mighty generous. Apparently it's for any investigation expenses that come up. And when it's done, he'll pay an extra 20 million. <laughs> Twenty million? Depending on the outcome, he might pay even more. <laughs> he must be swimming in cash. Holy hell. Sounds like a tempting offer, but do you really want to do it alone? Especially with your boss out of town. True. <laughs> One look at you and the client might drop the case and run. Right? At least find a smart-looking jacket to cover... 
whatever that is. <laughs> Indeed. You'll need to dress for the occasion, that's for sure. Man, you guys have no faith in me, huh? Well, I'm not putting on a show for him or anyone else. True style doesn't change with the tides. Not to mention, it's the heart that counts. Watch me knock this guy's socks off, just being plain old Kaito. He's about to expire. Hey, Bonaki, what's with the suit and tie? What? I thought I'd pull out all the stops for today's client. Dress for the occasion and all that. After all, a pro's gotta look the part, too. I mean... <laughs> Yeah? But you never give a rat's ass about that stuff. So I start now. Uh, today's just special, alright? Oh, there. Okay. But do you really need me here? Don't you get it? If I'm busy talking this guy up, who's gonna offer some tea? The landlady? Besides... Poured in the Matsugane family for years. The boss loved your tea, remember? Whoa, hang on. That was a long time ago. Well, I'm counting on you today. I'm paying you 50,000 just to serve two people. Coming from you, that's pretty generous. How much is this gig worth, anyway? Uh, that's a matter of, uh, detective client privilege. Come in! Hello there. I'm Kyoya Saramoto, CEO of Image Interactive. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I'm Masaharu Kaito, an investigator here. I'm Higashi, just a part-timer. It really is great to meet you, Kaito-san. I've heard so much about you. Good things, I hope? Of course. You're a legend in these parts, aren't you? I'm not so sure about that. Oh, but first, please, take a seat. Enjoy. Ah, why, thank you. Well then, uh, shall we get down to business? I understand you're looking for someone. Uh, may I ask who? That would be my wife. My deceased wife, actually. Your deceased wife? Can you give me some more details? I was under the impression she went missing. Well, I lost her about two years ago. She took her own life. I see. I'm very sorry. Let me rephrase then. You want us to find her even though you know she passed away? Yes, well... Why don't I start from the time she died? Two years ago, my wife left a suicide note at home one day and disappeared. As you can imagine, I went right to the police. Upon finding nothing, she was declared a missing person. Six months later, they recovered a body, possibly my wife's, on a riverbed in the mountains of Chiba. 
there's a large waterfall nearby, which she likely jumped. Her body was decomposed beyond recognition, but authorities later identified her based on something she was carrying. And what was that? A photograph. In it was her and our son. I see. But was that really enough to ID her? Wouldn't they have done some sort of analysis? Yes. I requested a DNA test be performed. Lo and behold, my wife was a near-perfect match. Then, at that point, her death was all but certain. Yet, you still believe she's alive? About a month ago, my wife's friend said she saw someone in Kamurocho that looked like her. This woman, according to my wife's friend, was with some unfamiliar man. And when the friend called out her name, she froze. Then she immediately fled. Hmm. Is it possible this was all just a coincidence? Believe me, I considered that. The DNA test had more or less cemented her death in my mind. But then I started doing my own research, and I found that DNA test results aren't always set in stone. Especially in cases where the body's in an advanced state of decomposition, the results can vary widely. I even came across an astonishing article in which someone's lost relative showed up after a DNA test said they died. After reading that, who wouldn't have hoped that their dear wife is still somewhere out there? Hmm. Mind you, this woman was the spitting image of my wife. Her voice was a perfect match too. And this is coming from a friend who's known her for years. As she herself put it, there's no way it wasn't her. If I could inquire about the compensation, my contact at Tender quoted two million in advance, plus another twenty million upon completion. Yes. Regardless of the outcome, I intend to have at least that much prepared. When you say at least that much, you mean... If you manage to find my wife safe and sound, I'll throw in another 10 million. So, a, a grand total of 32 million? Hey, Anaki. Just checking. I'm being paid 50,000 today, right? Yeah. 50,000 for serving some damn tea. Got a problem? Oh no, it's fine. Now I see where all that generosity is coming from. By the way, uh, may we request any photos of your wife you may have? <sighs> Sir? I've actually approached other detectives about this, but none of them could turn up any leads. Then I heard you were working as a detective, in Kamurocho no less. Immediately I thought to myself, if anyone can find my wife, it's him, considering how well acquainted you are. Huh? You saying I know her? Uh. Oh, Anaki, isn't that... Yes. Mikiko Natsume was her maiden name. I understand you used to live together long ago. And that sums up why I'm here. Because of how intimately you know her. You're really going to go? After what they did to the boss, I can't just sit back and do nothing! But you might actually get killed this time. I'm sorry. So your family is more important than me.
Believe me, I understand how bizarre this request might be. But I know you can get to the bottom of it. You lived with Mikiko in this very town. You knew her better than anyone. Kaito-san, I'm begging you. Won't you bring her back? I'd heard rumors. But I never thought they'd be true. Sadamoto-san, are you sure Mikiko took her own life? I mean, she did leave a suicide note. Why, though? The Mikiko I knew would never do that, no matter what the reason. Honestly, I wish I knew. The note was sparse on details. The hell does that mean? Aren't you supposed to be her husband? <sighs> For what my memory's worth, Mikiko seemed to have some anxieties about her job. And I was so busy with my own work at the time, I failed to give her support. I was hardly even home half the time. It was only when she left me that I realized how poorly I treated her. <clears throat> so, let's say Mikiko is alive. Then what? It's gonna be one big happy reunion? I don't really have an answer for that. I doubt she'd even want to look at me. But then again, we do have our son to consider. He's 14 already. His name's June. So, Mikiko's got a kid and everything. Yes. And he's just as rambunctious as his mother. He took off once he heard she might be alive. Even though I specifically told him to stay put, the moment my back was turned, he was gone. Wait, he ran away? He did. About two weeks ago. I thought he might pull something like this, so I set up location tracking on his phone. But, being that he left his phone in his room, he must have figured that out. Outsmarted by a teenager. I swear. Two weeks on his own at his age? At 14, he's what, in middle school? June pulls this kind of stunt all the time. He hangs out with these delinquents, often couch surfing for days at a time. Of course, I want to talk. Since most days, I missed the last train. And since I'm at a hotel, I won't even be home to notice he's gone. Well, how about that? Look, that's all beside the point. Right now, I need your help. <sighs> Hate to break it to you, Sadamoto-san. But I don't think I'm your guy. What? May I ask how come? I just... Don't think I'm cut out for it, is all. Come now! That's final. Fine. Fine. I know when a mind's made up. What a shame that is. Monaki, you sure you want to let this guy go? That's 32 mil walking away. Not to mention the truth about Mikiko. I know what I'm doing. Okay, you're the boss. Another 
job down the shitter. I think that calls for a drink. You, uh, want somebody to tag along? Sure, but weren't you slammed with the new opening and all? Well, I mean, yeah, there's work to be done. I'd have to go inspect the place after. Right. Then you better go deal with that. Glad to hear business is good, though. Sorry about that, Anaki. Oh, and about that 50 grand I owe you. Don't even worry about it. T was on the house today, man. When my Anaki says poor, I serve the best damn cup you ever tried. That shit hasn't changed. Oh, Higashi. You wonderful bastard. Huh? Hey, Anaki, that photo. Damn it. Don't just leave your junk in my office. Should I just toss it? Well, wouldn't be the first gig I tossed. Better head on down to Tender and see what else Mossida's got brewing. Go picking fights you can't win. Yanaki, you got a minute? What's up, Higashi? Yeah, so I just got a call from Charles. Remember how I told you about that kid who came by looking for you? Yeah, what about him? Well, he's back and causing problems like usual. Can you go take care of him? He's just some punk-ass kid. Why don't you take care of him? Because I got meetings and shit to deal with. My employee's in there on her own. Oh, I really gotta handle some kid? Just gonna abandon a college girl in trouble? Huh? Oh, I see. You almost got me with that one, dipshit. You think I'd lie to you? Seriously, she's young, she's single. Cute, too. Are you sure about that? Yep. 
Oh, did I mention she's way into beards? She says she likes them bearded and burly. Guess I have no choice. If a lady, uh, uh, if my bro needs my help, I guess I gotta go save the day. You're a lifesaver, Anaki. I'm counting on you here. Messing around! I'll kill you, you little whip! Damn. Talk about a shit show. You can relax now, miss. I'm taking over from here. <laughs> Are you Yakuza? No, actually, I was sent by the owner, Higashi. What's going on here? Oh, well, those men were being disgusting, but then that boy stood up for me. I'd rather be a wimp than a total piece of shit, not to mention an ugly one! Say that again, you brat! Go! <laughs> Too slow, dumbass! That's it. I'm carving you up! Step back, bud. <laughs> Hey, I said step back. You don't want to get hurt, do you? Uh. Hold up. Did you just pass out on me? Hey, miss. Mind getting this kid out of the way? Uh, uh, okay. You taking his place, ape man? Then I'll just have to carve you up first! Get me!
Take your dumb asses outside. Damn it! Hey, up and at him. Huh? Listen, you're a good kid for helping people, but taking on two grown-ass men is another story. Wait! Hey, you alright? Hit your head or something? What? Do I know you? Or, uh... Holy crap! It's you! You're Masaharu Kaito, from the Matsugane family! Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, I've been out of the family for a while now, but, uh... Man, I've been looking all over for you. I'm Jun Satomoto. Satomoto? Why does that name... Uh... You're... Mikiko's kid? <laughs> Guess we meet at long last! I heard you used to roll with the Matsugane family, so I've been asking people who looked apart what they knew. <sighs> Should've seen my face when I found out you guys broke up. Okay, well, wanna tell me why Mikiko's kid is going around looking for me? Here's the deal, Kaito-san. I want you to find my mom. The, uh, say what? Yeah, I thought you might have a clue where she is. You two used to live together and all. Uh, uh, kid, let me be frank. I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told your pops. You're asking the wrong guy. Wait, my dad came to you about this? Where are you going? Home. Wait up! Dude, what the heck? I thought you were mom's ex. Don't you care about her at all? She's nothing but a stranger to me now. But listen, we haven't heard from her in two years. That's if she's still alive. Don't you think she's in some kind of trouble? How should I? Maybe she's having the time of her life without some brat all up in her business. What the hell? Okay, back it up a sec. My mom would never desert me. Then where'd she go, huh? Get lost already. <sighs> I bet you just don't want to see her because she ditched your sorry ass. No. I read all about it in her diary. How mom wanted you out of the Yakuza so she could marry you with a clean conscience. Then you went on some kind of dangerous mission. Better die a henchman than live as a husband, huh? And now you turn your back on her again? <laughs> no wonder you two are strangers! What? You wanna go? <sighs> Might wanna ease up on the grown-up act, kid. Anyway, your mom and I are ancient history. So unfortunately, I can't do anything for you. <sighs> what if I told you I'm your son? Then what? You're still gonna walk away? What did you just say? I said, you and Mom might have had me. Wait, wait. This is total crazy talk. It was written in Mom's diary. Around the time you broke up. Her diary? Yeah. I read what happened after you went on some raid and you guys split. Apparently, she didn't get to tell you that I was a little fetus at the time. You gotta be shitting me. I am not shitting you! I actually think you're my dad. But then why? After all this time... Listen, why else would I be busting my ass to find you? Now come on! You and I are gonna go find Mom, and then she'll tell you herself!
was just another day in Kamurocho. After resolving a local incident, Kaito is approached by Kyoya Sadamoto, who asks him to search for his late wife Mikiko. Mikiko was Kaito's old flame, who parted ways with him long ago. Kaito turns Sadamoto down before any past wounds can reopen. But he soon finds himself face to face with Sadamoto's son, June. That's when June tells him the unthinkable, that Kaito might be his real father. Back in the day, the Matsugane family was on real bad terms with a rival. Like waiting for all-out war to kick off bad. One day, I got a call from the office saying they need me right away. So of course I hauled ass over. Hey! What's the situation? Some lady busted in here. And it seems like she means business. Huh? You called me over some lady? Not just any lady. A real hellcat. Says she ain't leaving till the boss gets back. Look. I'm not messing around! Oh, for the love of God, it hurts! Let go of me, you crazy bitch! Listen up! You lay a finger on Maho! I'll snap his arm clean off! Uh, hey, sis! This is bad! It's real bad! Hey! What the hell? Am I seeing this right? Why is Hoda getting his ass wet? I take it this gorilla is your muscle? You gonna try me or beat your chest? You're the one calling me a gorilla? Guys, what the fuck happened? It all started with the girl on the floor. She racked up quite a bill at one of our host clubs, but when the check came, she couldn't settle. We were gonna have to work it off at a cabaret club, but... This chick busted and it went fucking ballistic. What? Wait. How exactly is any of this our fault? You tell me, man. I wash my hands of it. You're running the cabaret club starting next month. You deal with this shit. Oh, come on. Hey, Hoda. Let's hear your side. She barged in here out of nowhere and came straight at me. Out of nowhere, my ass. I had to do something. For real? You two have to get your story straight. What have we here? This right here. Hey, Hoda. What'd you do to end up like that? Fuck, I don't know. She just burst in the office and told us to give her her sister. Hang on. So her sister was already here? Yeah. She was supposed to start working at one of our cabaret clubs. When this one busted in the door, she was already demanding to see the boss. When I said he wasn't here, she yelled at us to call him and let her wait in his office. Obviously talking to you assholes won't get me anywhere. What have we here? So, you're this madwoman's sister, right? Please don't kill me! Whoa! No one's killing anybody here. Uh, uh, uh. Speak for yourself, asshole! You leave my sister alone!
Is this it? Hey, what happened here? Uh, well, it happened so fast, I don't know. As soon as I came in here, this was happening. How does nobody know what happened? Was it nap time in the office or something? Fine. Guess I'll have to take a look around and make the call myself. What have we here? Now, they busted my ass all morning to get it, and now they're gonna find it. <sighs> if I knew this would happen, I would have put it in a locker. Just as long as they don't look behind the plate. I'm getting close. This right here. Is this it? This right here. I could have met a foxy lady like you outside of here. What? Tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna take you to the finest bar in town. And we can hash this all out over drinks. Oh, and I've got just the place in mind. It's real cozy. Just try hitting on me again. Whoa, sorry. <sighs> What have we here? Take another step and his arm goes snap like a twig! You find out if I'm lying? No, 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 I hear you. Let's try and simmer down, shall we? Let's see. Is it? This right here. What have we here? I see what's going on here, Mikiko Natsume. I figured a gal wouldn't bust in here without reason. If anything, you and your sister are the victims. Well, here and now. Not for the host club stuff. Huh? I'm saying these jerk-offs never learn their hospitality. I'd like to apologize for the rough reception. Okay, what's your angle here? I know you didn't come here just to drag your sister off and leave her dead unpaid. At the very least, I'm sure snapping off limbs wasn't your first intention. You 
You see this? This is your own resume. What about it? Uh, well, it proves the whole point of why you came down to our office. First things first. These guys need to grasp a basic fact. You only came here to talk, not pick a fight with the Yakuza. Quit going in circles and get to the point already! <laughs> one who brought those sweets, right? <sighs> that alone tells me breaking Hoda's arm wasn't your plan A. Well, well. Guess you're the smartest ape of the bunch. So what? Well, I can also tell how your negotiations broke down. The evidence is right here in front of me. It was your sister. Look how her top got messed up. Even though you kicked things off polite, it seems Hoda got hands-on at some point. Which explains why you got him crying uncle in his own office. <laughs> not bad for a Yakuza. You sure you're not a detective in disguise? <laughs> if they ever kick me out, I may just consider it. But listen, Mikiko-san. You have to admit, your sister is partly responsible. If you're gonna play, you gotta pay. It's just basic business, you see? I know how business works, and I never said we wouldn't pay you back. Okay, then what's the issue? The issue is, Maho's enrolled in college back home. If she ends up stuck as some hostess in Tokyo, she may as well kiss her education goodbye. I just want to see her graduate, find a career, and live a happy life. Can't your parents loan you the cash to get her out of this? No way! They'd freak if they knew I went to host clubs, let alone got into debt over one! Well, that part's all on you. Look, I get it with you people. Three million yen is a lot. I actually came to discuss repayment. But then this douchebag grabs my sister like some barbarian! Ah, ah, I only did it because your sister got shitty with me! Then, Mikiko-san, what's your real plan here? You got a lead on three mil somehow? Well, I work in Shinjuku. Just a desk job during the day. But my nights are pretty much free. And in college, I worked as a server. I even got employee of the month a few times. No, I know I've never been a hostess be that different. At the very least, I'm a lot more qualified than my sister. Wait, are you saying... I'm saying I'll work for you instead. I'll even give you a start date. How's that for basic business? And that's how I met Mikiko. She was just so headstrong and full of personality. That tenacity of hers pushed her to the top in no time. Not to mention, she was a real ball buster. She'd take it upon herself to punish bad customers. And, since it was my job to look after her, I'd step in when things got ugly. Which happened a lot. So this Mikiko chick's covering for her sister. Not a bad plan. It's rare to see someone go that far. Even for flesh and blood. Apparently, a car crash took their parents out when they were little. That was their only family. After that, they were lucky enough to get foster parents. Seems they're one big happy family now. Interesting. But is the boss gonna be cool with a swap? He says he doesn't see an issue. Long as we get paid. Fair enough. Just make sure she doesn't skip town and make it an issue, Anaki. Nah, she won't be a problem. Rough as she is, her heart's in the right place. Hey, what the hell was 
What's that for? You know the rules. No touching, no exceptions. Oh, come on. I am a paying customer. Who are you to tell me what to do? And who are you to feel up our staff? Nothing gives you that right. It's okay, Michiko. Really. But let's just go inside. I'm handling it, Momoko-chan. We kicking this chick to the curb or what? Yeah! Curb stomper if you have to! Call you back later, Higashi. Break time's over. Uh, uh, Aniki? <laughs> Mikiko! I'm her bodyguard. If you want to get hands on tonight, start with me. You heard that, boys? This fucking bastard! Take him down! Come on! Sorry. I just couldn't let them get away with what they did. No problem. Your safety is my job. <laughs> then I guess I'm in good hands, Mr. Bodyguard. Yo, what's with your office? No guns, no family crest? This place is lame. Oh, for the last time, I'm out of that life. This is the detective agency I work at now. Oh, yeah. Whoops. But damn, it's grody in here. You guys never clean up? Kid, just take a seat, will ya? My name's June, not Kid. Hey. That's... Something your pops forgot to take home. Huh. Weird. Uh, anyway, where are we at so far? Oh yeah, you were saying you're my kid. You know, you could call me your son, since that's what I am and all. <sighs> Look, just tell me what you know, alright? About your mom. Your pops filled me in on some of the details. Said something about how she might even still be alive. Yeah, it always seemed off to me. I just can't imagine her taking her life. But the DNA test said it was her, right? Feels like the odds of a mistake are pretty low. <sighs> I think Mom got caught up in some deep shit. Deep shit? As in... I don't know. But I think her suicide and the DNA test were faked. She's gotta be out there somewhere. 
As for why she can't get in touch, maybe she just can't. You sound like you thought this through. Any idea what happened? Maybe something went wrong at work. Or she got kidnapped by some criminals. Doesn't sound all that convincing. But now that you mention it, your dad did say she might have been anxious on the job. What did she do for work? Oh, she ran a cafe. Her cafe. No kidding. Did she run it all by herself? Yeah, she was doing real good too. She knows how to handle people. That's for sure. Though with her personality, I can also see her making a few enemies. Well... She would have bad customers from time to time. There were also these people who tried to buy her out. But I can't think of anyone who'd want her dead, you know? So... You think you're my son, and it says this in your mom's diary? Yeah, she writes everything in that diary. This one she wrote 15 years ago, I think. It was right after the two of you broke up. What exactly did she write? Um, stuff like... I don't know if I should keep it. I'll never see Masaharu-san again. I should get this taken care of, though. Oh, hell of a thing for you to read. Honestly, I get how she must have felt. After all, the man she loved walked out of her life and into a life-or-death situation. How could she marry and have a kid when her husband could get killed at any moment? Yeah. Tragic, ain't it? Then she decided to listen to her parents and marry the guy we all thought was my dad instead. But, at some point between your breakup and their marriage, she found out she was pregnant. That's probably why you never got word of it. Okay. Uh, for the sake of argument, let's say you are my kid. That means your dad got married, knowing your mom was carrying another man's child? I guess so. Yeah. He's really the type who'd commit like that? Could be. Maybe he was just that into her. I mean, sure, but, uh... June, you said your name was. What kind of mom has Mikiko been to you? What kind of mom? I guess I'd say she's been pretty cool. She's been... Cool? Yeah. Like, she would always lend a hand to someone in trouble. Even if it was some nasty flirt or a big hulking thug, she'd get right in his face and tell him off. A couple of times she almost threw down right in front of us. Dad would freak out big time. <laughs> Sounds about right. Anyway, are you gonna help me find my mom or what? Remember, I am a professional here. That means I get paid to work. And I doubt you can afford my services. <laughs> oh, I think I've got that covered. <laughs> what? You gonna pay me in watches? <laughs> I swiped it when my dad wasn't looking. Sure is a nice piece of work. How much do one of these run? About 20 mil, give or take. Wait, how much? 20 million yen, man. Ah, 20 mil for this? Fat chance. I've seen shit just like this at block over for only 30k. <laughs> you mean to tell me some idiot coughs up 20 mil to check the time? Never bullshit a bullshit kid. Don't believe me? Look it up. The brand's right there. <sighs> okay. How do you even pronounce this? <laughs> Bet it's some knockoff. Uh, huh? Holy shit! Damn thing's over 19 million! Is this some vintage collection? Nope, that's just the standard model. Dad's got a ton of them lying around, too. Uh, who are you? How 
How long would it take to earn that? <laughs> what was that about being a bullshitter? <sighs> so here's the deal, old man. I give you the watch, you go find my mom. What? Not good enough? It's not yours to give in the first place. Put it back where it belongs. You're really gonna say no because of that? Hey! Come on! Don't leave me hanging! I'm leaving to go find Mikiko. You coming? Oh, man. You can call me Kaito, not man. Ha! You got it, Kaito! So, where do we start? Kamurocho's not exactly a small place. There was this one spot your mom used to go all the time. Cafe Alps, it's called. Yeah, I remember. There she'd be. Sipping on coffee, reading a book. No noise from the city to bother her. Okay. And you think she might have went back there? Only one way to find out. Congrats, Maho-chan. <laughs> Gotta admit, I was getting a little worried when you started hitting the host clubs again. <laughs> Sometimes a girl has cravings, you know? Sometimes this girl can be a headache. Even so, nice work landing a job at a bank. Right out of college, too. Uh, it's just a desk job. Besides, it's my parents who know the board of directors and all. <sighs> All I'm going to say is please be careful. You never know what kind of people you're dealing with. I don't know if you've noticed, but weirdos seem to flock to you like creepy pigeons. Remember that one stalker you had at the convenience store? That's just one example. Oh yeah! Yeah... Next time some crazy guy bothers you, you tell me right away. Oh, sure. Like you'd rush all the way back home just for that. I would if I had to. See, this is why I don't tell you things. You never end up treating me like an adult. I mean, I get that you're worried about me, but you don't have to breathe down my neck all the time. Says the girl who went broke over some stupid host. How could I not worry about you? Why, just the other day, you were eating up some sleazeballs pyramid scheme. You said it nearly changed your life. Well, it felt right at the time, okay? Hey, a catch like you ought to be more careful. Take your sister, for example. She knows when to keep her guard up. <laughs> I guess I'll take your word for it, Kaito-san. Wait, did you just imply Mikiko's a catch too? Huh? That, what'd I say? Shoot, I forgot they were waiting. I never said they had to be outside. I mean, they could at least come in and say hi, right? Ugh, so rude. <sighs> Sorry about them, Masaharu-san. Don't be. If I were your folks, I'd probably feel the same. Oh, don't say that. They just haven't seen what a good guy you are. I'm gonna have to give them a talking to. After all, I'm a modern day Cupid. I brought you two together, didn't I? Now watch as I work my magic. <laughs> good luck wearing them down.
No sign of Mom. Guess that'd be too easy. Yeah, it never is. But for now, we ask around and see if anyone recognizes her. Hey, you got a minute? Oh, what's up? Has this woman been by here recently? Mm, not that I remember. Are you sure? She would have been here in the past two weeks. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, last week I was out of town with my girl, so I really wouldn't know. Oh, yeah, you could always ask the manager. Is he around? I mean, shouldn't you know? Oh, for sure. I just don't know where he is now. I did see him before. You know what? I'll go find him. Enjoying a little nap, huh? Yo, you got a sec? Hey! <sighs> How the hell does he sleep through that? Maybe I need to find a new approach. Son, I'm stuffed like a cheese rangoon. <laughs> Still not enough? I can't get any louder. And if I get rougher, I'll break something. you be good morning to you too I just had a quick question uh, okay uh, what is it I'm Kaito from the Yagami detective agency I'm after a missing person uh, who's missing this woman. She been around lately? I remember she was a regular here for the longest time. Uh, oh, this lady. You've seen her? Uh, not recently, but she certainly was a regular. Mikiko-san was her name. Good, so you know her. What else do you remember? 
Uh. Actually, a lot. She stood up for me on multiple occasions. <laughs> I'm sure you know the types we get around here. <laughs> if anyone started making trouble around her, she'd march over and walk them right out. <laughs> yeah, she was a pistol, all right. Oh, and you! You and her were together, weren't you? That's right. You two had your favorite spot by the window. Hey! I told you, put it out! What now? Can't you see there's a baby in here, moron? Now either put that shit out or go smoke outside! Pipe down before I bust your face, kid! Let go, damn it! Hey, teach this little shit a lesson. Of course. Hey, I'm his guardian. You got a problem with the kid, you talk to me. I guess it's not talking you want. Aniki, you hear this dipshit? Oh, I've heard enough. Let's put the fear of the Aragaki brothers in him. your head sometimes. Not everyone's gonna go down from an arm lock. Yeah, read you loud and clear. Although, your technique was spot on. Where'd you pick that one up? Oh, Mom taught me that a while back. So that was the Mikiko special. Yeah, she knew all kinds of stuff. Kickboxing, self-defense, you name it. Mom was badass. Reminds me of a story your mom once told me. Some little shitheads were picking on your aunt, right? But instead of telling the teacher, she trained herself at a dojo till she could take him down herself. Guess you two had something in common. You both kick ass. Boom! Pa! You fire off punches like a rocket launcher. You seriously gotta teach me how you do that. <laughs> Why? So you can pick even more fights? Self-defense is all a kid like you needs. Ah, <sighs> weak. <sighs> Thank you so much for what you did. As I was saying earlier, guys like them always come around making trouble. Glad I could help clean up. Shall we continue our discussion? Right, right. Damn punks made me lose focus. So, can you tell me anything about Mikiko? Sure. I'd say this happened, oh, about ten days ago. A woman came in and ordered coffee. She was seated by the window, too. At the time, I thought she looked familiar, but I wasn't 100% sure. But when you showed me that picture of Mikiko, I immediately thought of that customer. Was it her? Well, I can't say for certain. She wore sunglasses, so it may have been someone else. Got it. 
Are there any other details you remember? Hmm. What else? Oh, this one's about Mikiko-san herself. I remember she used to bring a friend fairly often. Maybe she might know something more. I believe she knew this friend from a cabaret club. Oh, you don't mean Momoko-chan. Momoko-chan, that's the one. I haven't seen her in a few years, but she might still be around. Last time I heard, she was running a bar in the Champion District. Yeah, Momoko's. I used to pop in there sometimes. Nice! Then I guess we know where we're headed. Thanks for all your help today, boss man. Oh no, this was the least I could do. Please, come back again. Don't go picking fights you can't win. ありがとうございました。何見てんだ。<笑><笑> 
Got a little workout in, at least. You going? By the way, Kaito, I've been curious. How does one join the Yakuza anyway? Say what? Maybe I want to find me a family, so I thought I'd ask the expert. Is it just like they do in the movies, where you swear an oath to your boss over a cup of sake? Chu, please don't tell me you're serious. Yeah, and what if I am? Then you're even dumber than I thought. No kid should even think of wanting that life. Well, I'm not a kid anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, really! Okay. Then say goodbye to having your own bank account. Or a place under your own name. Any Yakuza you see is probably dead broke. That's how bad the police have them now. Trust me when I tell you. Give it up. Mm, not sure I buy all that. You've been out of the game for a while, right? How much wax do you have in those ears? Ha! <sighs> Found you, little bastard! I knew I'd track your skinny ass down! You a friend of yours? Oh, this asshole? I caught him beating on a homeless guy, so I figured he needed a lesson in empathy. Didn't last long when I twisted his arm, though. You just love getting into shit, don't you? Listen up, shit stain! It's time I got to payback! What, you want round two? This time I'm breaking bones. And I'm chopping limbs. Get ready to bleed! <gasps> June, allow me. Oh, hey, you with me? Uh, uh, what is the deal with you? You better back the fuck off, man! Unless you want to get hurt! Let's just take his ass down already! This kid really knows how to choose him. You. You okay? Uh, wait. Don't tell me I... Passed out again? Yeah, you sure did. You want to tell me what's up with that? I just can't handle that shit. What shit? Knives, man. When I see one, my brain just shuts down. The hell? You got some sort of knife of phobia going on? Don't tell me you got stuck at some point. Not exactly. See, I was messing around with my dad's knife collection one day. And like a dad, he warned me never to touch them. But as a kid, of course, I was gonna. Okay. Well, as you can guess, my dad walked in on me. And man, was he pissed. Which naturally got me pissed, so I started talking back. That's when he put the knife to my arm. You saying he cut you? A little. Enough to draw blood, anyway. You get it now, June? Knives were made to hurt. A person can die if they're not careful around them. I don't want you touching these ever again. Understand? That's what did you mean. 
you ask me, he took his lesson way too far. Yeah, no shit. Guy has no fucking clue how to be a dad. All he does is work himself sick in his office. Though, he did apologize later. After he found out how bad he messed with me. Said he was out of line. No kidding. Hey, you think the Yakuza would still take me even with the fear of knives? If you pass out the moment you see a blade, I don't think you'd last long either way. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Fainting on the job in that line of work's a death sentence. Besides, it's not like you can always swoop in and save the day. I gotta get over this bullshit. Well, you can save the pity party for later. We're out to find your mom, remember? Right. Yeah. All right, let's go. Hey there, Momoko-chan. Uh, Kaito-san. Gosh, it's been ages. Oh, who is this young man? His son. The name's June. Really? Oh my goodness, Kaito-san. When did you... Uh, don't listen to him. He's actually... Uh, it's kind of complicated. So, Mikiko-chan might be alive? You are sure? Well, we're not, but apparently a lady who looked just like her was spotted in town. I came here hoping you might know what that's about. After all, you two were pretty much inseparable. Before she disappeared, did she reach out to you at all? Hmm... I can't really say she did. All I remember is she never forgave herself for what happened to Maho-chan. Wait, what happened to Maho-chan? Oh no, you haven't heard? I think it was... 13, 14 years ago? Anyway, it was tragic. Without even seeing it coming, Maho-chan passed away. You, you're kidding. Oh, not Maho-chan. How did it happen? Well, according to the reports, it was arson. Imagine your last moments being trapped in a fire. Arson? Oh, God. What a way to go. Their foster parents died that night, too. Why these horrible things happen, I'll never know. Mikiko-chan took it especially hard. Of course she would. Her sister was really all she had left. <sighs> After that, Mikiko-chan changed. It's like all the sadness in her heart evaporated from that point on. She'd say things like she'd kill the bastard who did it, as if the only thing driving her was anger. Will they ever catch the guy who did it? They did. Apparently it was a stalker who'd been after Maho-chan a while. He hung himself immediately after. Bastard just did himself in, huh? Mikiko really hated that. Yeah. Mikiko-chan got so depressed. <laughs> it was hard to watch. Not only did she lose her little sister, she lost the people who took her in. Even though they weren't flesh and blood, they may as well have been her real parents. And all that goes away in a night. <laughs> to someone she can't even hold responsible. <laughs> June, did you know this? Well, kinda. It happened right after I was born, though, so I never heard much details. Damn. <sighs> you okay, Kaito? Yeah, I'm fine. We've got a job to do, don't we? Right. Where else in town might Mom have gone? <sighs> hey, what about your special spot? Have you checked there yet? Huh? What special spot? Oh, seriously? I'm talking about Kamuro Theater. 
And Mikiko-chan told me all about it way back when. Although, wasn't it called something else back then? Oh. Hey, uh, what was this special spot of theirs? Hmm. It's where Kaito-san asked your mom to go steady. <laughs> Whoa! For real? <laughs> mm-hmm. If I remember right, he took her to a movie and confessed at the downstairs cafe. Uh, yeah. A anyway, the place has been remodeled since then. The cafe's not even there anymore. But isn't the place itself still important? Those memories will always be there. <sighs> I mean, maybe, but would Mikiko even go there after all these years? She might have if she came all the way back to Kamurocho. After all, she described it as one of the happiest times in her life. Huh. Did she really? Well, it's not like we have any other leads. Might be worth a shot to check. Yeah, I suppose we could. So, what's our move? Guess we head inside and ask around. Although it is a long shot considering we're looking for a look-alike here. The odds of some random moviegoer knowing her don't sound too great to me. How do we go about this then? Well, gotta play it smart. Find someone who might have been here a month back. You really think we'll run into someone like that? Well... <laughs> We're about to find out. Hey, fellas, can I bug you for a sec? Yeah, what's up? I'm looking for somebody. Either of you seen this woman this past month? Huh. Well, think I'd remember if I saw her. She's gorgeous. Yeah, I haven't seen her either. And I'm out here all the time. Gotcha. You know, you could always try asking that girl who works at the cafe. Since she works the counter, she's got a good view of the lobby. She sees everyone who goes in and out. Thanks. Not a bad idea. Hey, you have a sec? I'm looking for the woman in this photo. Uh, who's that supposed to be? My mom. She's actually gone missing. Oh no, I'm so sorry. The thing is, she was seen here in town about a month ago. We wanted to know if she's dropped by. You recognize her? No, I can't say I do. I see. Oh, but I know somebody who might. Who? Our cleaning lady. She's been working here forever, and she's really good at remembering people's faces. Hey, that's some good news. Where can we find her? 
I saw her heading toward the roof not too long ago. Okay, the roof it is. Really appreciate the help. Well, no cleaning ladies I can see. Did we miss her already? Maybe she went somewhere else. Mika-chan! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Kaito, you hear that kid? She was calling for a Miki-chan just now. I highly doubt some little girl is out here calling your mom. Come on, we should at least ask. Not like we have any other bright ideas. Hi. Sorry to bother you, but did you just say Miki-chan right now? Yeah. She got separated from me. She your sister? No. My cat. Your cat? Oh, man. Hey. Are you by yourself? You're not lost, are you? No. My brother's downstairs helping me look. The nice cleaning lady's helping, too. Oh, the cleaning lady. You happen to know where she is right now? She said she'd look around the building next door. Next door would be the Millennium Tower, huh? Hey, Kaito, why don't we keep an eye out for her cat? Sure, no harm there. We'll let you know if we find her, little lady. Okay, thanks. Ma'am, uh, can I bother you for a moment? Hmm? May I help you? Oh, goodness, that must be Miki-chan. Now, how'd she get up there? Ah, right. Uh, Miki-chan's that lost cat, huh? Oh, are you also out searching for the little deer? Perhaps we can work together. Well, sure, but I'm actually here for another reason. I need to ask you some questions. <laughs> then they'll have to wait till afterward. The kitty comes first, understand? We might as well help out, Kaito, seeing as we're already here and all. Yeah, you got a point. Seems like we won't get far otherwise. Hey, June. Any idea how to get that cat down? Hmm... Maybe we could grab her attention with a toy. Even a ball might work. Cats love chasing things, right? Yeah, not to mention being chased. I wonder would it work right now? Hmm. Now, how to get it to move? Well, what we don't want to do is scare it away. Maybe it'd want to chase a drone or an RC helicopter. Sure would be. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Hey, 
I think she likes it. <laughs> we did it, Kaito! Nice one! Oh, Miki-chan! Ma'am, would it be all right to ask you a question? Certainly. What can I do for you? I'm Kaito, from the Yagami Detective Agency. We're looking for the woman in the picture. My, what a sweetheart. Who is she? She's my mom, who's been missing. Missing? Oh my, that's awful. Thing is... She may have been sighted here in town not long ago. She has a bit of history with Kamuro Theater, so we were thinking she might have stopped by. And since you work here and all, we were wondering if you've seen her. Oh, I've been working here about four years now. But I can't say I've seen her around. Damn. Although, now that I think on it... What is it, miss? Something good? Uh, I remember. It was that picture. The same? Yes. This was nearly two years ago. A, a man was going around with a picture asking if the woman in it had been found. What you're doing right now reminded me. Really? A man was looking for her two years ago? A year and a half, to be precise. It seemed serious. Wait a minute. Mom disappeared two years ago. If someone went looking for her half a year later... Oh. Wait, what does that mean? Ma'am, could you describe this man you saw? What exactly did he ask you? Hmm, it has been a while since we spoke. But you know... What is it? He did give me his contact information, in case I learned anything relevant about the situation. Really? Do you still have his information? I do believe so. Now, where could it be? Oh, I imagine it's tucked away in a drawer back home. If you have it, would you mind sharing that with us? We'll even pay if need be. And wait till you're off the clock, of course. Here, my number. That ought to do. Wonderful. It won't be long until I'm off, so I'll look for that info the moment I get home. That'd be great. Thanks so much. Oh, hope it helps reunite you with your mother, kiddo. All right, talk to you soon. And with that, we head back to the office. Okay. Oh, hey. If it isn't that Bato agency shit for brains. Kaito? Wait. What's that kid with you? June here is my client. What do you care? You were queened or something? Kidnappers, Kaito. Or at the very least, stalkers. Are they now? Yeah. They've been following me around since yesterday. Bet they know my dad's loaded and want me for the ransom. They say shit like, we're decent people, just come with us, we'll even buy you some video games. Bunch of creepy old geezers, and he's their head idiot! Hey, watch your mouth! I think he's not a head idiot. That's right! You're the head idiot here! Can you two shut your pie holes? You're not making us look any smarter. First blackmail, now kidnapping. They're a crime you won't do? Makes me sick to think you call yourselves detectives. I ain't here for a lecture. Just give us the gate, or you're in for a world of hurt. You're not laying a hand on my client. You want him? You have to go through me. Oh, you are such a goddamn pest, you know that? Boys, exterminate this asshole!
get away with nabbing a kid his age. Worth a try. <gasps> Everyone be cool, and nobody gets hurt. <sighs> the classic misdirect. Fights you can't win. いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございました。Boxes. Hmm. 
Is this it? What have we here? This right here. Huh? Let's see. What have we here? Oh, uh, hello? Hi, lovely. This is Kirara from the Campanella, and you've reached my voicemail. Super duper sorry, but I'll promise to give you all my tender affection next time you come in. Bye bye. Is this it? Thanks for calling Kyushu number one star. Uh, uh, sorry, wrong number. Next time I'll call with an order, okay? Let's see. What have we here? This right here. Hello, and thank you for your business. This is the Bato Detective Agency, yes? How can I help you today? Oh, uh, see, I actually lost the address to our new place. People say I have a memory of a goldfish, so... <laughs> gotcha. No worries. Happens all the time. Let me go ahead and pull up your info. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's see. It says here it's on Senrio Avenue. As for the building number... One moment...
All right, let's go. I'm gonna check on the kid. You keep an eye out here. You got it. Let's see. Huh. This right here. This right here. Day is it today? You go. This right here. Hmm. Oh, 
down you go. Still alive, right? Good. This right here. What have we here? Is it? How'd you know where I was? Cause I'm a pro, that's how. Oh, come on! How long have you been here? We were just on our way out. <laughs> no. Well, I suggest you stay and play. I brought in a special guest for the occasion. Should I even bother to ask? Put us on! Sam? It's that Kaito schmuck I told you about. You're up! You're a heavy hitter. As a former Omi Alliance patriarch, he's as heavy as they come. See, after his clan went the way of the dinosaur, well, we figured we ought to put his talent to work. Better say your prayers. Just hearing the name Fudo the Killer in Kansai makes people piss themselves on the spot. Not to mention he's built like a brick shit house. You're just a little skid mark to him. Oh, uh, Kaito? Kids might actually have a point. Can you take him? In a heartbeat. So, heard you used to roll with the Tojo clan. Is that right? That was a lifetime ago. I'm just a detective on the straight and narrow now. And that rat must be your kid, huh? Well, 
Not exactly. The name's June, you big oaf! Ha! You. Well, I may not know what brought you, but unlike you, I don't get paid to think. I get paid to ruin me. So don't hold it against me when your son sees me rip you apart! You done posturing. Then let's do this! Kaito, you're a beast! Well, look at you. Someone just doesn't stay down. <laughs> what can I say? The man stays true to form. Ha! You haven't seen shit from my dad yet. He was just warming up. Uh, Fudo-san? Your name's Kaito, ain't it? <laughs> yeah? You got a good kid there. My son should be about his age. But he's done with his old man now. I didn't take this job to ruin more families. So from here, I'm calling it quits. Yeah. Uh, huh? Bastard. Looks like I've got no choice. <sighs> I really hate to do this, but the kid comes with us no matter what. Even if you die. Kaito, meet me in the batting center. What? Hey! If you want me, then come get me! <laughs> you bitches couldn't catch me if you tried! Bye! Go get his ass! You dumbass. You got lucky.
genius. Get off my ass, would you? Sorry? I, 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 I'm afraid I don't follow? You're tailing me right now. You want to get laid out? <laughs> don't hit me! Now! Where's the police? <laughs> いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございました。いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございあ<笑><笑> 
still go picking fights you can't win. Kaito, how'd you like my little escape plan? Pretty slick, right? Dumbass! You nearly got yourself killed! What if that guy shot you, huh? Yeah, well, thanks to me, no one got shot. I totally pulled my weight back there. Don't you realize those were ex-Yakuza? They wouldn't hesitate to dump you in the ocean if they wanted. So what? Was I supposed to stay put? Tell me how you planned on getting out of that. Well... I was working on that, okay? See? You would have been toast if it wasn't for me. Admit it. Also, you know they need me alive for a ransom, right? I wasn't in danger at all. <sighs> you know what, kid? Where's your house? Huh? Why? So I can walk you home and leave your ass there. No matter what I tell you, you keep getting yourself deeper into dangerous shit. And I'm not gonna be held liable. Come on, don't be like that. What about my mom? I'll find her myself. When I do, I'll give you a ring. How about that? Dude, chill. Why are you flipping out on me? I was just trying to help out, okay? God, I'm glad I don't have kids. Okay, where the hell did I put your dad's card? Ah, here we go. Hey, 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 stop! What's gotten into you? I'm not going home, damn it. <sighs> Kid, I get it. You're committed, really. But what would your old man think if you died out here? My old man? <sighs> My old man wouldn't give a flying shit. If I was dead, it'd only make his life easier. His job's all that matters to him. <laughs> that can't be right. Sure that's not just teen angst talking? No, man. I swear I'm not making this up. He genuinely does not care about me. Like, I was gone for a whole week not too long ago. When I got back home, he didn't even notice I'd left. Well, you ever think it's his position that keeps him occupied? He's in charge of an entire company, right? It's not just that, man. I've lived with him long enough to know what he really thinks. Ever since I was little, I could tell the way he looked at me was off. It's like, yeah, he put up with me when Mom was around, but now? He doesn't even pretend to be a dad. Bet he's glad I'm out of his hair as we speak. There's no way he'd think that about his own son. That's the thing, isn't it? I'm not even his son to begin with. Mom's diary told me that much. Sure explains why my dad hates my guts. We don't even know that. Well, I'd place my bets on it. And I'll do anything to find out for sure. That way, all these years would finally start making sense. Also, there's another thing. The way Mom kept writing about you in her diary made me want to meet you. What for? Mom described you like some kind of real-life superhero. She said that you had a knack for knowing whenever she was in over her head, that you'd swoop in and take out anyone giving her shit. Her diary was full of cool stories about you. I'd spend hours poring over it. But maybe don't mention that to her. She really talked me up that good, huh? Yeah, she did. That's kind of why I ended up hoping you were my dad. I just needed it to be true. Uh, hang on a minute. 
Don't tell me I'm why you're all hung up on the Yakuza. Well, yeah. Who wouldn't be after reading all that about you? Listen, I get where you're coming from, but give up on the Yakuza thing. Not many are cut out for that life. Plus, you've got way better options out there. Are you saying that as my Yakuza senpai, or are you trying to give me a dad lecture? Call it what you want. I'm still not changing my tune. A bad idea is a bad idea. You say that, but how else am I gonna get strong? Strong enough to protect the people I care about. You wanna get strong, June? Then focus on what's in here. Huh? What do you mean? Just keep that fire burning in your heart. And it'll all make sense one day. Well, then I'm gonna tag along with you until that day comes. Sound good? Uh, all right. Just do me a favor. No more stunts that could land you in the morgue, okay? Deal! So, where were we before all of this? Good question. Let's figure that out at the office. The cleaning lady might have gotten in touch. Right, I forgot about her. That way, huh? Is it? This right here. Huh? What's up? Well, darn. It seems I lost my key. No way. Really? How about you come help me look for it? Maybe we should go to the police, see if anyone turned your key in. I never lost the key, Ju. Huh? I could smell cigarettes coming from the office. And not the brand we smoke. Oh, that's weird. All the brands smell the same to me. Hang on. You better not be smoking. Uh, well, look, is that really important right now? Besides, who cares what brand it is? Who cares? It means someone's been smoking on our property. Like I said, who cares? I'm saying someone might be in our office. And I'm pretty damn sure I locked the door. Oh, you don't mean... You think it's those bogus detectives? I do. And I'm gonna use the drone to find out. Can his giant ass be? He was right there when he said he dropped the key. Ah, he'll be back soon. Knowing him, he'll probably just give up and kick the door in. Hey, 
Go unlock the door for the big galoot. Okay. Talk about a close call. What now? We do the smart thing when dealing with burglars. Hello, officer. I got a problem here. Some armed robbers just broke into my office. to tuck and roll. Oh, and you owe me for the window. Hey! Freeze! Solves that problem. Bet they'll think twice about pulling that again. got a lead. It's from the cleaning lady. What she got for us? So, the guy who was going around looking for Mikiko? Apparently, he's a doctor. He gave our cleaning lady friend his number, too. Looks like a landline. So if I do a little search... Bingo! Got ourselves a homepage. Runs a clinic in Chiba. That's way out in the sticks. So, is that our next lead on Mom, then? Could be. Nice! Then let's get going! Right. So, about the detective and that kid looking for Mikiko Satomoto. What next? Caleb, don't let him catch wise. On it. Kaito and June take to the streets to discover Mikiko's whereabouts. But the clues don't come easy, as Mikiko was reported dead two years back. Eventually, a doctor by the name of Yasutaka Shirakaba turns up. It seems Shirakaba had been looking for Mikiko as well. Following their only solid lead, Kaito and June head to Shirakaba's clinic in the remote countryside. Yet an unknown danger threatens to end their investigation early on. the alarm and everything. Turning it off in your sleep is a talent. <laughs> if you're hungry, I suggest you get out of bed and help set the table. Breakfast is almost ready. Sleepyhead. Huh? What am I doing back here? Wasn't I just out looking for... <sighs> Still in dreamland, I take it. You do always sleep like a rock. Now come on, breakfast is almost on the table. At least give me a hand with the plates. Uh, sure. Dig in. Th 
thanks for cooking. on your mind. Oh, nothing. Just thought you looked nice this morning. Okay, what are you hiding? What am I? Uh, nothing. Okay, so you were just sleep talking. Hey, I'm wide awake you. Then tell me, did you wake up for me or the food? Ah. Uh. Good question. Gee, way to ruin the moment. Say, Mikiko. What? Would you make me breakfast tomorrow, too? I suppose I could. Mikiko, we gotta talk about the rain. Huh? Listen, the boss is like a father to me. So if it came down to it, you know. Meal time is a peaceful time. No drama at the table. We established that when we first moved in together. Right. I guess I forgot. Sorry. Let me wash those. Sure. That'd be helpful. Um, Masaharu-san? Can we talk about today? What's up? Actually, never mind. You sure? Mikiko, listen. The last thing I want to do is screw up what the two of us got going. I've been thinking about things, and I decided I'm going to talk to Matsugane-san. I know he'll hear me out. What? See, when I swore that oath to him, I figured I'd signed my life over, too. That's why I can't forgive those pricks who went after him. But the last thing I want to do is break your heart. Wait, Masaharu-san, wh what are you saying? I'm saying, I'm out of the raid. That's final. Now, going clean's gonna be another story, but uh, I'll take care of it somehow. As long as I can keep waking up to you, it's worth it. Am I interrupting something? Uh, huh? June, I thought I wouldn't see you today. Sleep well? Well, yeah, but it's Dad here who's always sleeping in. In fact, he's asleep right now! How long are you gonna doze off anyway? Gotta wake up to reality sometime! Huh? Kaito? Kaito! Hello? Anybody home? <sighs> We're here. Uh, oh, I gotcha. What were you dreaming about anyway? You were smiling like a little kid almost. W was I? Huh. Don't remember. It must have been a real nice dream. <sighs> if you say so. Hey, my mom's still out there, right? Well, she sure wouldn't have done herself in. 
You and I both know that. Right. There's no way she'd disappear without a good reason. Here's our clinic. And apparently, someone's residence. Think we'll get some clues about my mom here? We don't know that yet, but we'll see. Uh, yes? Uh, uh, sorry to bother, but uh, I'm a detective out from Kamurocho. The name is Kaito. Uh, what would a detective want with me? Well, this is where my search took me. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Does it have to be me, specifically? W what is this about? I'm looking for a lady by the name of Mikiko Saramoto. <sighs> She's my mom, by the way. I thought she was dead, but it turns out she might just be missing. You're her son? Um, give me a moment. Thanks. I came on behalf of the Yagami Detective Agency. Very well. I am Yasutaka Shirakaba, a director of the clinic here. So, you're really Mikiko's son? Yeah, my name's June. I take it you're familiar with Mikiko then? Uh, well, that depends on what you mean by familiar. Uh, here, why don't we all have a seat? I apologize for not inviting you in. You see, I've been living alone so long. My place is an absolute mess. Don't sweat it. After all, we did show up out of the blue. Now, let's talk about you and Mikiko. As I understand it, you were looking for her as well. This was a year and a half ago in Kamurocho. Yes, there's no denying that. Can I ask? What for? I was trying to confirm her identity. Her identity? Care to explain that? Deep within these mountains lies a waterfall, an infamous suicide spot. Perhaps I should start from there. A year and a half ago, a woman's body was discovered downstream. All right. Due to exposure to the elements, her face was too decomposed to identify. However, a photo was found in her jacket. It appeared to be taken at the Millennium Tower in Shinjuku. It was of the woman and her son. No way. Me? But since that was her only possession, it wasn't enough to confirm her identity outright. As such, the police opened the case and began investigating. Unfortunately, progress was uh, slow, if not stifled. So thinking I could help move things along, I set out for Kamurocho, picture in hand. Whatever you heard about me was likely from back then. That would mean you're the one who analyzed Mikiko's body? Yes, uh, that was me. Her husband had requested a DNA test. Is there a chance those results were wrong? Not at a 99% match. I hate to say it, but that body was Mikiko Saramoto's. <laughs> Kaito, this can't be right. What the hell is he even talking about right now? Hello? Earth to Kaito! <laughs> Don't just ignore me! Say something! Didn't you hear? It's time to go home, kid. This was all for nothing. Mikiko. Your mom. 
is gone for good. What? No. Let me ask you this, Shirakawa-san. Are you sure her death was suicide? No signs of a natural trauma were detected on the body. And the police had confirmed it wasn't murder, so... I'm afraid there's no other explanation. I certainly wish I had better news to give you, especially since you traveled all this way. The least I can do is call a cab and save you a walk to the station. Uh, wait... The Millennium Tower? Kaito? One last question, Shirakaba-san. Yes? About that photo they found on Mikiko's body. Was that the only one? Just her and June at the Millennium Tower. Nothing more? I believe that should have been it, yes. <sighs> I'll be damned. What? Okay. Now we got a problem, Shirakaba-san. Your story doesn't add up. I'm sorry? Don't play dumb here. If all Mikiko had on her was a photo at the Millennium Tower, and you never knew her alive, then what you told me was grade-A bullshit. Take a look at this. You tongue-tied yet? Pardon, but, uh, what is this supposed to prove? Oh! Guess not much, huh? I'll get it right this time. Uh-huh. Think back to when you went to Kamaro Theater. Maybe you'll recall a certain cleaning lady. Seems you approached her a year and a half ago about Mikiko. You knew the place meant something to her, right? Uh, Problem is, how would you even know that in the first place? Everything you knew about her came from a single photo, taken at the Millennium Tower. In fact, that was your only clue to her identity. Didn't you say as much? Uh, uh... I'll tell you right now. Mikiko did have a connection with Kamaro Theater. But that's nothing a stranger, much less some random doctor, would know. Unless, of course, you found that out from Mikiko herself. Uh, well, I, uh... Quit blubbering and tell me the truth! I, I... I understand. I'll talk. I think we should all go inside. That alone might help clear things up. Huh? Please make yourselves at home. More tea will be ready soon. Be real with me, Kaito. You think... You think he's got Mom locked up somewhere? This guy's a real creeper, if you ask me. I don't know. But I wouldn't rule it out. It'd explain the lack of contact, at least. Right? Dude, what if he lured us in to get rid of us? For all we know, he could be a total psycho. <laughs> Yo. 
Is this it? Hey, that smell. Yo, you got food on you? Yeah, got some for you too. Sweet. Don't mind if I do. Smell. This right here. Hmm. Huh? How hot do I make the tea? Eighty five Celsius. No, no, that, that's for coffee. Guessing you don't entertain very often. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, not really. Oh, and don't even think about poisoning us. I, I would never do such a thing. Oh, my goodness. This right here. Is it? your mom, ain't it? When do you think it was taken? I don't know. But my mom used to wear her hair short. Guess it could have grown out since then. Who took it, though? And why is it here? Wait a sec. If this was taken after my mom disappeared... Then yeah. She's still alive. But this shot alone doesn't say much else. This right here. Wonder when this picture's from. You know anything, June? Hmm. Can't say for sure, but I doubt it was all that long ago. Uh huh. What have we here? right here. Hey, Kaito! Isn't this... Mikiko. Alive and well. Shit just keeps getting stranger. Why would Shirakaba lie about her death? And why hasn't Mikiko reached out to her family? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I'd say Four Eyes owes us some answers. So, Mikiko is alive. I got that right? Yes. She's alive. No health issues to speak of, either. Awesome! You hear that, Kaito? <laughs> Tell me, then. What's Mikiko been up to for two years? Why hasn't she hit up her family? And where is she right now? If you're assuming she kept her family in the dark, I, I can assure you that's not the case. What do you mean? She developed dissociative amnesia. Uh, in layman's terms, uh, severe memory loss. 
She... what? It was two years ago that I found Mikiko-san at the river bank. I rushed back here to give her treatment, but when she came to, she couldn't remember anything. All she could tell me was her name. Damn. If it was amnesia, no wonder we never heard from her. Okay. Can you tell us where she is now? Ah, uh, well, uh, I don't quite know where she is. She left some time ago. What? She's gone? You've got some beans to spill, Doc. And I ain't talking at Amame. If Mikiko's really alive, then let's get this out in the open. You faked Mikiko's death. That I did. It, it was to protect her. To protect her? How's that work? It was right after I rescued Mikiko-san from that riverbank. Some unfamiliar people showed up in our area, real unsavory types, and they had a picture of Mikiko-san. They went around asking all the locals, have you seen this woman? I was no exception. But then Mikiko-san, who had seen them from a distance, started trembling. What'd they look like? They were young, in their late twenties to mid-thirties. They had numerous piercings, uh, dye jobs, and flashy clothes. Intimidating, would best describe them. In all honesty, they looked like a street gang. People you wouldn't want at your doorstep. Damn it! I bet they tried to kill my mom two years ago! I had similar thoughts. Perhaps Mikiko-san ran afoul of some very bad people in her past. And to make it appear as suicide, she was pushed from the top of a waterfall. But afterward, they couldn't find her body, and her death was never reported. That's why I assumed they came snooping around, to confirm whether they finished the job. So... that's when you went ahead and faked her death? Yes. But only to throw those people off her trail. Got it. So, rather than holding her against her will, you were trying to keep her safe. Something doesn't sit right, though. Why didn't you call the cops straight away? Another thing. Mikiko-san was very hesitant about me getting the law involved. Actually, to be more precise, it wasn't the police that scared her, but rather the outside world. It was as if she were terrified of, of someone out there discovering she was alive. How? I thought she lost her memories. Let me give you a little background on that. When a person develops amnesia, they don't lose their memories. Rather, they lose touch with them. This can happen for several reasons, but for dissociative amnesia, it's usually triggered by extreme stress or past wounds. In any case, an amnesiac may avoid a perceived danger without quite understanding why. But the condition doesn't grant a clean slate. Those painful memories will still be alive in their head. And sometimes they'll resurface as instinct, directly influencing their actions. Huh. Well, you're the doctor. Guess I'll take your word for it. You mentioned Mikiko was gone earlier. Could you tell me how that went down? It was about ten days ago. I had finished work for the day, so I came back to find Mikiko-san rushing out at the door. It was all very odd. The TV was left on, she uh, didn't seem to have anything on her, and the look on her face was startling. What I think happened is her memory suddenly returned. Just like that? Yes, though I couldn't tell you what prompted it. She never gave me a reason as to why she went away. All she said was, uh, I have unfinished business to deal with. Unfinished business? What could that be? Hard to say. All I know is that the Mikiko-san I saw right then was completely different from the one I knew. 
Her face was always so kind and gentle before. Yet there she was, glaring like a woman possessed. And her eyes were filled with hatred. Hatred? You sure that's what you saw? That's precisely what I saw. Something altogether deadly had consumed her. That look she had. It was enough to burn a man alive. Perhaps whatever she went through threatened to destabilize her mind. So she shut herself off from that event for an entire two years. All to preserve herself until she recuperated. That being said, I believe the group who came looking for her in the beginning must have been involved. Back it up a sec. If Mom's got her memories back, how come she still hasn't contacted us? Got a point there. My only guess is she's trying to keep a low profile. Perhaps. What if Mikiko-san intended to commit some sort of crime? What gives you that idea? Well, if that is the case, I figure it'd be more convenient for her to be considered dead than alive. If Mikiko-san is on record as deceased, she could do whatever she wanted without ever troubling Junkun or her husband. And since the crime wouldn't be linked to her, her family wouldn't have to live with any stigma. All right, this is getting way too crazy. Kind of freaking out here. For some doctor out in the sticks, you sure are slick faking a death good enough to fool the cops. Well, I am the local police's medical examiner. So it was well within my ability to find another body as a substitute for Mikiko-san. We are located by a suicide spot, after all. Morbid as it is, we're not exactly in short supply of corpses. Come to think of it, Sadamoto-san said something. About how the body was too decomposed to be identified on scene. Yes, I had to put quite a bit of work in to make the substitute appear authentic. I chose a body with a similar build to Mikiko-san as well. The photograph served as a convincing personal touch. And you did all the DNA testing too? That I did. It was a matter of swapping out specimens here and there. You really pulled out all the stops, huh? That's a lot of risk you're taking there. Maybe what I did was unacceptable, but I assure you, this was all for Mikiko-san's safety. So, uh, back to Mikiko. She really forgot everything but her name? As far as I'd observed, yes. She couldn't recall her address, her date of birth, loved ones, nothing. I discovered Mikiko-san with nothing but the clothes on her back. She had no personal effects that could point to her identity. In all likelihood, the rapids had washed most of her belongings away. Wait, but I thought she had that photo. Uh, yes, I'm getting to that. A half a year or so after I had taken her in, I found a woman's jacket downstream of the waterfall. This photo was in one of the jacket's pockets. Ah, oh, yeah. This is when we took a trip to Kamrocho. That's with the Millennium Tower in it. So why'd you go asking about Kamaro Theater instead? If Mikiko had amnesia, you wouldn't have known the connection. So how'd you find out? There was a special on TV about the development history of Kamurocho. Part of the program featured the former Kamaro Theater, to which Mikiko responded immediately. Responded? How? Her eyes filled with tears. But they were happy, as if she were lost in memory. <sighs> Although her memories didn't return in that moment, I knew that place must have been important to her. That picture over there was from when I took her to see Kamuro Theater in person. Roughly two years had passed since I'd found her. 
but her memories were still buried away. Fortunately, she'd gotten well enough to venture outside every now and again. I personally found it risky, but alas, Mikiko-san was determined to see Kamuro Theater for herself, come hell or high water. Shirakaba-san, how was she when you took her? Did she maybe act different? I'd say so. And mind you, the venue had undergone drastic changes since she last saw it. Nevertheless, she still seemed quite nostalgic. I think deep down in her heart, she knew what she was seeing. The peace on her face told me that. That's so. So, let me get this straight. A year and a half ago, a photo of Mom and me washed up. Only then did you go around asking about her identity, right? Uh, uh, well, yes, uh, that's right. After that, you swapped or rearranged a corpse or whatever. I get why. You just wanted to keep Mom out of trouble. But why didn't you at least reach out to us? You could have gotten contact at any time. Oh, uh, you see, I... Uh, um... Kid's got a point. You didn't even tell Mikiko herself who she was, did you? Even though you knew for quite some time. <clears throat> hey! Something else you want to tell us? Forgive me! I know making excuses won't help. But you see, from the moment Mikiko-san came into my life... Don't tell me. You're in love with her. What? Uh, uh, yes. Ah, oh, jeez. When I met her, it was love at first sight. Soon enough, I was utterly smitten. Nothing could take my mind off her. It wasn't long before I began wishing her happy little life could continue forever. But that's when that picture of her washed up. I thought if Mikiko-san remembered who she was, well, she'd walk right out of my life without a moment's hesitation. <sighs> that short, blissful time we shared was a blessing I didn't deserve. A man who knew nothing but loneliness was graced by an angel from above, one radiant and pure as snow. Forgive me! Forgive me for being a hopeless fool! But I promise you, I kept things decent. I didn't touch a hair on her head. Even a selfish man like me knows where to draw the line. I would never take advantage of her! Not sure I'd buy that. You call hiding her away for two years decent? <laughs> Please trust me! It was only to keep her out of harm's way! Uh, I get that, Shirakaba-san. I don't blame you for wanting to protect someone, especially when trouble comes knocking. Fact is, you risked your neck to keep Mikiko safe. Not many would. That aside, you didn't tell her who she was when you had the chance. And that's your big mistake. No wonder you two had a happy little life here. You took her other options away. Do you have any idea what kind of hell you put her family through? I know that whatever I do, it'll never be enough to atone. That much is clear. That all you gotta say? Then I suggest you apologize to Mikiko at the very least. Of course, she might knock your ass out when you do. Hey, what the hell? Greetings! Is, uh, Mikiko Sadamoto-san around? Who the hell's asking?
Ever heard of Crimson Lotus? We're a friendly group from Shinjuku just swinging by for a visit. Anyway, I'm Nishio, the group mouthpiece, if you will. Crimson Lotus ain't ringing any bells. You supposed to be some kind of gang? Actually, I believe they're the group who came asking about Mikiko-san two years ago. Really? Weren't you looking for Mikiko Sadamoto too? Over in Kamurocho? Funny thing is, we need to find her too. And fast. Pardon, but uh, didn't I tell you last time? Mikiko Sadamoto-san unfortunately passed away. I just finished telling these people the same. There's nobody left to look for. Nice try, nerd. But you ain't playing us today. Your bluff might have worked last time, but now I've got people telling me she's alive and kicking. And we can't just let a killer run free, can we? A killer? Yeah, fucking Broad had the nerve to bump off some of our higher-ups. Huh, <laughs> quit talking out your ass. Dude, I shit you not. You really never heard of the young elite serial killings in Kamrocho? The victims are our founding members. Legendary badasses, all of them. And there's evidence of that chick at the murder scene, so... Yeah. We're trying to pull the plug on this bloodbath. Impossible. Don't tell me. This was Mikiko's unfinished business? To get back at Crimson Lotus. Right. Anyway, we're gonna need to peek inside the house now. Thanks for being chill about it. You won't find Mikiko in here. Take it from us, she's nowhere. <laughs> I call bullshit. What are you gonna do to Mikiko if you find her? Ooh, those plans are a bit above my pay grade, but I do know it won't be pretty. If I had to guess, it'd be like... Torturous death? I mean, she freaking went and killed our OGs right when they were peeking! That's fucked up! So, yeah, she's got a ticket for a nice long trip to hell. It's only fair, you know? Oh, yeah? <laughs> then I'm sending my foot on a nice long trip up your ass! Come on! Why'd you have to go for the face? I freaking went to a salon today, too! We got a mixer tomorrow, you know? Chirakaba, son. Watch June for me. Uh, okay. Damn it, why you gotta be so stubborn? Who even are you? Just an old bodyguard of hers. <laughs> huh? So, which of you punks wants it first? Do your work! 
Is that karate? And not half bad by the looks of it. Yeah, thanks. I've been practicing a while. Hey! You assholes got started without me! I thought I told you to wait till I got here. Shuchan! This guy's a pain in the ass! So let me take over for you. Better clear me a path, boys! Yo! It's on! <laughs> You're just drunk, dude. And you must be Kaito-san, huh? I'm the front man for Crimson Lotus. Kenmochi is the name. Just so you know, I've never been defeated in the underground fighting circuit. You're looking at a real fucking champ. My boys are ready for you versus me. Maybe we should have sold tickets, yeah? Huh? Let's give them a good show, huh? Mm. Oh. Oh, sorry about this, big guy. You a tough bastard.
Jeez, fantastic fuck! Shoot, More booze, dipshits! You hear me? Top shelf shit only! Shushan, please get a grip. Any more and you'll start barfing blood! Why don't we just call it here? No! More! I need... more. Gentlemen! Hate to be a buzzkill, but party's over for now. Handshakes all around and to all a good night. That. I don't know, but I should probably call the cops in case they come knocking again. Hey, Kaito. What they said about Mom being a killer, you think that's true? Hmm. It doesn't matter. Our goal is to find Mikiko, whatever she's caught up in. I mean, I know that. I'll drive. I'd like to get to the bottom of this as well. Oh, you sure? Shoot, <laughs> that'll save us big on train fare. <clears throat> Doesn't look like we're being followed. So, uh, uh, what sort of uh, relationship did you have with uh, Mikiko-san? Huh? Where is this coming from all of a sudden? When Mikiko saw Kamuro Theater on television, she looked like she was lost in the past. And the moment I told you that, you wore the same look. Except yours was more sullen. So, I'm guessing Mikiko's connection to the place had something to do with you. Perhaps you two were involved romantically? Good guess. So you were, then? <sighs> there was a time I thought I'd be with her forever. Forever? You mean marriage? What happened? Well, I happened to be with the Yakuza at the time. As you can imagine, Mikiko wanted me out. Easier said than done. My boss had taken a bullet that nearly prompted an all-out war. I couldn't just up and leave. Do you mean to say you chose the Yakuza over Mikiko? <sighs> In the end, yeah, that's what it was. For Mikiko, it was the last straw. I was out on a raid when she left. Came home to a note in an empty apartment. Kaito-san, let me ask you something. Do you still love her? Even now? Love her? You know she's got a husband, right? That isn't what I'm asking. I'm asking how you feel in your heart. Ethical issues and legal ramifications aside, you can't always choose who you love. So I think it's okay to be honest with yourself. At least listening to your feelings isn't a crime. Uh-huh. Besides, I'm sure it wasn't easy letting a woman like Mikiko-san go. Am I wrong? Yeah. And what makes you think that? Call it a hunch. But am I wrong? Well, the way I'm itching to find her, maybe 
worthy I never did let go. Then that would mean you still love her, yes? <sighs> Could be. But then, once I started searching for Mikiko with her kid, these thoughts kept coming at me. Like, maybe I could have done things different. And now, I'm stuck thinking of a life I never had. As you may be aware, Kaito-san, I too have feelings for Mikiko-san. And if she never returns them, then I fully accept that. That said, I wouldn't hesitate to give up everything for her. My own life included. <laughs> You're serious about that? Completely. I've never met a woman like her in my life. So if we do end up finding her... I intend to propose to her. Wait, what? Well, before you get carried away, don't forget she's legally married. I'm aware. But if I don't at least share how I feel, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. As for right now, I'm giving this all I've got. <laughs> Not a bad resolution in my book. Those punks earlier? They were screaming about some boss of theirs getting killed. Hmm. I wonder if it's related to the young elite serial killings as of late. <laughs> Either way, I hope my boss gets it too. <laughs> hey, fellas. Did you see a building on fire? Oh, uh, yeah, actually. I think around Tenkaichi Street? Kaito-san! Yeah, let's move! Shall we then? 
Where's the woman? We can get around her from up here. Hey, you blockheads are Crimson Lotus, right? Huh? Oh shit, it's that guy from the doctors. Sorry, but your little plan's getting shut down. Uh, come on! Who the hell are you? End of the line, punk! I can't tell what's going on from here! Get out of my way, asshole! Hey, that's my line! Get me! <laughs>
right there! Nothing of shit! Just fuck off already! Here we go! with them I lost track of all the guys in that gang. The fact that I'm even here is just a coincidence. You're a liar! <laughs> hey! Where's that backup? If they don't get here soon, then Nishimura's dead! <sighs> Mikiko! John Stalker was behind that. That's just the lies they told me. They're the ones who really killed them. Unbelievable. <gasps> Asizaki-san! Damn you! <laughs> Die! Oh, he's up. Wait, where's Mikiko? What happened after I went down? Well, the owner of that security company got shot to death on the roof. His name was Ashizaki. His office was burning up too. You think it's the killer's work? Not sure. I can't find those details anywhere. Gotcha. 
Oh, and to top it off, Nishimura, a man who was visiting Ashizaki last night, was found dead in an alley this morning. They killed them. My whole family. They took my mother and my father. Mo! They burned them alive! By the way, Kaito, the police came by earlier. Uh, they said to contact them once you're up. I think they wanted to question you. Oh, just what I needed. Ah, oh. You'll live. That bullet only grazed your shoulder. And by some miracle, your bones are still intact. The doctor was amazed you're still alive. Said that fall would have at the very least paralyzed anyone else. <laughs> Well, I say it's time to get back at it. Uh, Kaito-san? Lying around on my ass won't get me closer to Mikiko. Plus, I'd rather not deal with the cops. Let me go with you. All right. Kaito-san, take a look at this before you go. What's all this? Profiles on the four victims murdered in Kamurocho. I put them together last night after a bit of research. Nice work. In summary, all the victims seem to be ordinary people. But that may only be on the surface. According to the rumors on the internet, of which I unearthed a substantial number, many of the victims had rather suspicious backgrounds. Some may have even changed their names. Sounds about right for one of these little thug groups. Unlike the Yakuza, they don't have a family to answer to. Take that blue-haired dipshit from before. He acts like he's in some college club without a care in the world. So it seems. Uh, here's another interesting tidbit. Some of the victims had a fighting record, meaning they competed in underground tournaments. But each one was found successfully subdued, even showing signs of force consistent with interrogation. Mikiko did always know how to handle herself. Yeah, she kept it up with the workouts and the kickboxing, even after Dad came into the picture. She could totally take some thug one-on-one. -on -one. Mom's tough as nails. Hot damn. Anyway, what's our next move? Right. We should probably go investigate the crime scene. What crime scene would that be? Where the murder took place last night. Might be some clues left to find. I see. Though I imagine the scene's still quite busy. Will the police really allow you on site? Oh, I'm hoping to avoid the cops altogether. I'm gonna sneak into the place. Ah, well, I suppose that's one way to do it. Catch you later, then. Mind serving as our alibi while we're over there? I'll give the police a good answer. Just... Make sure you find Mikiko-san, and keep her from dirtying her hands. June! And... Kaito-san? What is this? Ah, <sighs> crap. Oh, don't worry. We can explain. But, uh, what brings you here, of all places? Well, one of my police contacts got in touch. Said a boy here matched June's description. Ah. Uh... Well, June? What do you have to say for yourself? After you go wandering off for days on end? Yeah, like you even give a shit! Just go back home by yourself! June! Can we just... <sighs> Never mind. Actually, you and I might want to have a talk, Sanamoto-san. It's about June... and Mikiko. But what's going on with Mikiko? Well, I'll just put it out there. Turns out your wife's still alive. She's alive? My Mikiko? Where is she? Is she all right? All right's not exactly how I put it. It's pretty complicated to explain. 
complicated. To think all that was happening. And Mikiko, possibly a murderer? I know she's out for some kind of revenge. She's aware it was really Crimson Lotus who burned her family alive. I see. That's very difficult to process. We had always believed it was Maho Chun's stalker that did it. Yet now some sinister group emerges. Kaito san, does Mikiko really believe Crimson Lotus orchestrated this stalker story or whatever? That's what she said. It's likely the stalker got pinned as a scapegoat for the whole thing. Now, can you give me anything on your end? How's Crimson Lotus fit into all this? Nothing's making any sense so far. It couldn't be. What? What's wrong? To tell you the truth, this may have been set into motion even before the arson. You see, Mikiko's family had been under pressure from a certain real estate broker to unload their property. As I recall, that broker was flush with foreign capital and seeking land for a sizable new complex. Mikiko's parents stood to profit quite substantially, were they to take the offer. But I was told they rejected whatever came their way. This went on for quite some time. And then, the tragedy happened. Got it. So Crimson Lotus really was behind it all. Mikiko's parents had to die? Because of some land deal? Yes. Although a group like that may have planned to kill them all along. Anyhow, once Mikiko's family was gone, their land was inherited by a distant relative. And since they wanted nothing to do with any stigmatized property, they sold it to the broker in the end. So maybe Mikiko got too close to the truth, and it nearly killed her. Yeah, that ought to explain it. Then, if that is the case, then Mikiko's in the right! If I knew who killed my family, why, I'd hunt them down myself. Taking lives of innocent people, all for profit. What monsters! Sadamoto-san, there's something else I've been meaning to ask you. It's about June's biological death. I know. He thinks you're his real dad, right? Or at least, he hopes you are. Uh, how'd you know? Well, June and I got into an argument once. And he said as much to me at the time. Sorry to hear that. Well, make no mistake. June is definitely my son. Yeah, I believe you. Deep down, I'm sure June understands that as well. This fantasy he spun up to feel better? Symptoms of a typical teenager. Are you sure he knows what's what? I am. This is nothing but a phase he's going through. I think it was right around elementary school when it started. He began stealing away Mikiko's diary, reading it over and over in secret. And you, the Yakuza with a heart of gold, were his favorite character. Right. June told me that himself. It's because I let work take priority. Even when June was little, I never spent the time with him I should have. And whenever the stress from work got to my head, well, let's just say I reacted poorly, even to a child seeking daddy's attention. So I fully understand why he latched on to Mikiko's writings. It's nothing I'm surprised or jealous about. The boy needs an actual father figure. That said, I hope you'll forgive me for letting him believe what he wants, at least for now. Of course, it's pathetic for me to be saying that. Uh, shoot, it's from one of the board members. I don't mind going after your son, Sadamoto-san. And when I find him, I'll send him on home. But you're gonna need to set him straight. Excuse me. Yes, this is Sadamoto. Right. 
Thank you for your help with that contract. <sighs> Send me an invoice for your expenses. I'll cover them. Yes, that sounds excellent. Although there's one small issue. You see that shit? It's always the same. Who'd want a stuffed shirt for a dad? Don't say that. He's a busy guy. Well, now that that asshole's gone, how about we get back on the case? All right. Next step. Getting onto that murder scene at Tenkaichi Alley. What are we gonna do if the cops see us? If it happens, it happens. Let's move. Good. Knee deep in cops. Can we get around them? Only if we make that I sneak in. June, you wait out here. Any Bato guys show up? Just shout for the cops and they'll scatter. Right on. Good luck. Careful now.
this right here. What have we here? This right here. This right here. Let's see. Is this it? Sure, I recognize these guys.
this right here. Impossible. How'd you do that? Easy. I thought you said you won your precincts tournament. Yeah, and lost to a prodigy. What showy club are you with, kid? None. Never even had lessons. I guess I'm just a natural at it. Yo. Kaito, what's up? What have you been up to? Just stomping a cop at Shogi. That sort of thing. Well, time to stomp on elsewhere. We got us a lead. Oh yeah? Where to? Wherever we gotta be. Oh. Okay then. Hi! How can I be of service? Tsukumo, you're good with computers, right? Think you can handle pulling some data from a burnt-up hard drive? It all depends on its condition, but it's certainly not impossible. Well, you mind taking a look? And make it quick if you can. Sure, not a problem. But I have to ask, what sort of case did you find yourself in this time? Right, about that. I should probably fill you in. Got a feeling I'll be asking more favors. Here's the deal. I see. So a group of inconspicuous thugs murders a rich family to gain access to their fortune. That's quite a story. Well, let's start with analyzing that hard drive. I've sent a motorcycle courier to your location. Figured it'd be faster to pick it up that way. Once I get my hands on it, I'll tell you what I find. Good shit. Thanks for the assist. All right. Now, let's go have us a stakeout. If any luck, your mom will show up. Whoa. A live stakeout? I've seen that on detective shows before. Uh, don't they get boring after a while? If that's your attitude, you can just hang back at the office. No, I'm going to. People gonna think we look weird? Huh? Oh, I figured we look like father and son coming home from a ball game. Yeah, I don't know about that. Hey, there he is. Looks like he just clocked in. So you really think my mom's gonna show? I wouldn't hold my breath, but it's possible. After all, Ken Mochi's next on her hit list. Guess we'll be stuck here for a while, then. Uh, let me see your lighter. Huh? <laughs> Who would have thought we smoked the same brand? Yo, didn't I already tell you you're too young? Knock that shit off. Man... Come on. Let's change up locations. What for? Might raise some eyebrows if we stay in one spot too long. We gotta change our clothes, too.
Whoa. All right. Let's tail him. Following me. Maybe I should grab some grub. Uh, must be seeing shit. Remember that old geezer I told you about? A stubborn one, living alone, who wouldn't leave. Oh yeah, what about him? He's got this dog he loves like his own grandkid, right? So I snatched the little thing up. Aw, that's so mean. <laughs> oh, it gets better. After that, I gave the old fart a hot dog. And when he wolfed the thing down, I told him it was dog meat. <laughs> got him so spooked. He puked! <laughs> wow, Shu Chan. You're terrible. Please tell me that dog's still alive. Of course he is. He's with Nishio right now. <laughs> Guy loves pets. We'll give him back once the old geezer falls in line. Anyway, Nishio tells me he's discovered the magic of blind dates. <laughs> or any bastard must be pretty desperate. He's the one who goes to all those men's salons, right? Yeah, not that it does him any good. He'll be a dirty rat dog till the day he dies and all the ladies know it. I tell him it's his mind, not his looks that needs polish. Ought to take that boy on a spiritual retreat or something. Ooh, what if he has some kind of revelation? Can he still be in your gang? Oh, come on! Gang's just a figure of speech. 
We don't do any bad stuff, the haters say. We're nothing but a good bunch of friends. You know we even donate to charity. What do you? I'm impressed. She hates it? Hmm? Huh? Stay out of this, kid. I said get away! He's at it again. Give me a freaking break. You goddamn brat! Go on. You should get out of here. Thank you! Who the hell do you think you are? I'm gonna have to teach you a lesson. Hold up. You got a problem with him. And you gotta go through me. The hell? It was dad or something? And you're both gonna get a lesson together. Come on! Forget this! Sorry. I know we should be going after Kenmochi. True. But you made the right call. So don't sweat it. Oh. Okay. Anyway. Kenmochi shouldn't be too far. Let's hurry up and find him. Yeah. Shizaki, the guy who died, he had his little fella pierced. You think they take it out before cremation? Oh, um, wouldn't they normally? But I mean, even a funeral director wouldn't peek down behind his nuggets. So, maybe no one noticed. His nuggets? Yeah, his dumplings. You know what I mean, don't you? Um, his earlobes? You're using some kind of Hosaka slang, right? <laughs> For real? Now you're just being abstruse. You mean obtuse. Uh, never mind. I forget there's an age gap between us. Still got much to learn. <sighs> Thank you. 
Oh, yeah. sure. You ain't shady at all. I thought I had it in my pocket. Uh, must be seeing shit. Find Ken Mochi. Hey, you know, Crimson Lotus used to be just nine of us in college. And now look where we are. It really is amazing, Shu Chan. I'm sure it's your personality that attracted all those people. <laughs> Not to mention, we do things on the level. No bosses, no grunts, just one big happy family. We all got nicknames, too. No sons or sirs allowed. That formality shit makes me sick. Ooh, you're so egalitarian. Eh, I wouldn't exactly call us eagles. We're more like a wolf pack. We're all real tight, you know? We help each other out when we're in need. And if you mess with us, we all come get you. Anybody even giving us the stink eye gets their face rearranged by the boys. Oh, uh, and you're free to join or leave whenever. Our policy's not to tie it down. Do you still keep in touch with those who leave? Absolutely. That's why we gotta take out the lady who's been killing off our old buddies. We oughta cut off her skin and feed it to some dogs. It'll make for a real good time. Shuchan, that's so wild. <laughs> You really are a true friend. What are you looking at? 
Where are they going? Uh, nowhere you should worry about. Huh? Isn't that... What's up? I knew it! That's Mom! You sure? Yeah! I bet she was tailing Ken Mochi! They set her up! What? That bastard got himself tailed on purpose to lure her out! Let's go! Mikiko-san! Ah! Damn it! What do we do? No time to waste. I'm busting in! Wait a minute! What about me? Just head back to the office. Shit's about to get ugly. <laughs> All right! Just get Mom back safe, okay? Yo... It's Senna, right? With the Bato boys? <laughs> Kaito! What are you doing here? You were with Mikiko earlier. What the hell for? I tried... protecting her. It's what a detective... would do. Please don't tell me. Mikiko's your client? Yeah... she is. Save the details for later. Where is she now? <sighs> Upstairs. This entire hotel is Crimson Lotus turf. There's nowhere to run. <sighs> like I'd ever do that. I'm sorry I couldn't save her, Kaito. Please, get her the hell out of here. Not like you had to ask. Guess I shouldn't overstay my welcome. You're not going to be much use like that. Go on and head outside. <sighs> I hate to admit it, but you're probably right. The elevator stopped at the top floor. The rest, you'll have to figure out. Way, asshole. 
each other's blood on the goddamn mat. Oh, it's all coming back. My days chasing glory and spilling guts in the underground. Can you feel the adrenaline? Then show me what you got, Kaijo! Bastard. I'll make you pay. With your life.
going to court it. Hey! What the? I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I never meant to kill anybody. The fuck are you saying? Nobody was supposed to be home. He said they were on vacation. But then, I burned them alive. <laughs> <laughs> Mikiko. Uh, don't worry. I ain't laid a finger on her. Huh? <laughs> you fell for it. But those punches after you hit ape shit? <laughs> Priceless! <laughs> Nearly made me forget all the pain! Come on, take another shot! Make it go away! Please! I can't take it! I don't want to hurt anymore! Kinmochi, I hope you hurt till the day you die. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Mikiko. You're safe now. <sighs>《A series of brutal murders rocks the young elites in Kamurocho. Each victim was a founder of Crimson Lotus, a group of thugs for hire. Mikiko lost her only sister at the hands of these thugs, along with her foster parents. And to get revenge, she takes matters into her own hands. Like a phantom in the night, she attempts to kill the Crimson Lotus founders one by one. However, Ken Mochi lays an ambush for Mikiko, fearing that he might be her next target. Kaito bursts in on the scene and returns Mikiko back to safety. Seeing her safe and sound grants him a moment's repose, but their ordeal is far from over. She all right? They didn't do nothing to her, did they? Yeah, she's fine. She's just out. Oh, that's good. Get in, Kaito. We're taking Mikiko-san somewhere safe. Fine. But you better be ready to talk. Uh-huh. As you can see, we're packing up. Excuse the mess. Crazy to think you were working for Mikiko all this time. Why didn't you just say so? Because we only found out who she really was the other day. We had no idea she was June's mom, either. Even though she's your client? All she gave us was a job, not her name. Said to protect a June Sadamoto. Kidnap him if you have to, but make sure he stays safe. That's the long and short of it. Yeah, I'm not following. So, she hired some crooked detectives and left her husband and kid in the dark? Just, what the hell was she planning? You're aware she's been trying to get revenge on Crimson Lotus, yes? Yeah. 
So, what if she needed a babysitter? After her deed was done, all she'd need to do was swing by here, pick up June, and hightail it out of Japan. Bullshit. <laughs> oh! Mikiko-san! Uh, Mikiko. Masaharu-san? Oh, you scared the piss out of me. You saved me again? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot. I'm supposed to be your bodyguard, remember? <laughs> All right, Mikiko. Tell me, did you really kill those people? I intended to, but I never got the chance. What do you mean? Well, someone else was always one step ahead of me. No matter who I was after, they were killed before I even showed up. Ashizaki, the man in the burning building, same deal. He was dead by the time I arrived, and the place was already up in smoke. So then... You're saying you're not a killer, after all. Correct. Though I'd give anything to do him in myself. Bastards. Hey, any idea who might be beating you to the punch? <sighs> I wish I knew. I see. Mikiko. There's a lot I want to ask you. Are you okay to talk? Yeah. Why go after the Crimson Lotus founders? Was it really out of revenge? You mentioned Crimson Lotus being responsible for killing your family. What set this all into motion? It all started with Kenmochi. He was some kind of real estate broker way back when. He was making a fortune, too. And that was before the bastard went after my parents. Right. Sadamoto-san mentioned something like that. Except, there was no evidence that they ever started the fire. The police pinned it all on the stalker and left it at that. Meaning it's up to me to get justice. Mikiko. Two years back, you disappeared from your home, leaving a suicide note behind. The cops believe you killed yourself, but obviously you never did. Of course not. Besides, I can't just die and leave my son behind. It was Crimson Lotus who framed my suicide. Must have been convenient for them. I figured that was the case. But still, I can't believe you lived. They seriously pushed you off a waterfall? To this day, I have no clue how I survived. I was apparently knocked out at the time. Maybe I had the devil's luck. Anyway, when I woke up, Shirakaba-san had already taken me in. But I couldn't remember anything. What made your memories come back? I was watching TV. TV? Yes. Kyoya's face was on there. Right. Your husband. He's been on TV a lot lately. I think I saw him on some morning show. Anyway, he was chatting with a celebrity, looking real smug. And that's when it all came back. What Crimson Lotus had done to me. And what they took away. Was there a reason you didn't contact your family right then? Sadamoto-san and Jun were worried like hell. <sighs> Let's just say I had some unfinished business to deal with. The kind a woman's family doesn't need to know about. Okay then. Let's say you had taken down Crimson Lotus. Then what? You really meant for these dopes to take Jun? <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. That's all I can say. Mikiko, why'd you want to stick June with these shady assholes? Because I needed a detective who'd take an anonymous job. I 
couldn't let it get out that I was still alive. The last thing I wanted was Crimson Lotus hunting me down first. And while detectives are supposed to maintain confidentiality, I can't just take that at face value. Besides, any legit detective would turn down some random woman asking to snatch up a specific kid, right? True. Guess that explains why you'd go to Ex-Yakuza. Yeah. Except Igarashi-san figured out who I was midway through it all. Sorry I had to pry, Mikiko-san. But I always vet my clients. I'll admit, I was shocked to find out a dead woman hired us. Not to mention one who was hell-bent on taking out Crimson Lotus. Those disgusting bastards. But hey, that's the most exciting shit that's happened to us in years. Why wouldn't we go all in? I appreciate the help, Igarashi-san. Your people have had my back since day one. And Senda-san. I'm sorry my actions put you in harm's way. <laughs> How'd you even afford them after being gone two years? You have cash stored away somewhere? After all I went through, I still managed to have my wedding ring. Pawn that off right away. Apparently it was enough to cover my fee, and then some. You know... Your boy June ended up paying me a visit. He wanted me to help him find his mom. I knew about that. Igarashi-san had told me he was with you. It didn't take me long to figure out what he was up to. He also thinks he's my son. Of course, I beg to differ, but... Uh... Right. That's all in his imagination. Yeah. That's what your husband said, too. I guess June was reading her diary from when we were together, and got some ideas in his head. He said you wrote, I'll never see Masaharu-san again, and I should get this taken care of. I wrote that? Huh. I wonder what I meant. Come on, you really don't remember? How could I? That diary's as old as time. And even so... Wait... You don't mean... Bring in some bells? Remember that time I borrowed 50,000 yen while we were out shopping? I forgot to grab money from the bank. But there it was, the cutest coat I had ever seen. The last one on the rack. And of course, I left my card at home too. Huh. You know what? It does sound familiar. Hold on. Don't tell me. Mm-hmm. I never gave you your money back after we split up. So I was stuck thinking about whether or not I should pay you back. It would have been pretty awkward after the breakup we had. So yeah, that was... stressful. What? You mean to tell me that's what all that meant? If you want, I could give you 50 grand right now. Uh, no thanks. Really? <laughs> okay, you're the boss. <sighs> Easy, Mikiko-san. They might have put drugs in your system. Why don't you take a rest in the back? Sure. I'll take you up on that. Your guy, Senda. He's into Mikiko, isn't he? That obvious, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? The guy's a big softie. I always tell him not to get too close to clients. What about you? Mikiko got your attention too? For a crooked detective, I'd say you're pretty devoted. Maybe I am. I've always respected fearless women like her. And besides, it's devotion that got our customer satisfaction rate topping 80%. That said, the guarantee applies to real customers only. Suckers don't get the same deal. <laughs> Corrupt and methodical. Gotta have a system, right? Huh?
Hey, Kaito. You think Mikiko-san's in the suites? Oh, yeah. If memory serves, she always liked dessert with her coffee. Noted. Thank you. Kaito here. What's up? Guess what? I was able to salvage the data from that hard drive, damaged as it was. No shit! Nice going, man. Anything useful on there? <laughs> well, I did find something intriguing. Scans of some under-the-table transactions. Though, whether they're useful to you or not, that I cannot say. Well, wanna fill me in anyway? Okay, so these scans showed questionable wire transfer records. It seems it was a security company that burned down. But 17 years ago, it received very large sums of unspecified funds over the course of seven years. And the source of these funds was a smartphone app developer called Devonir. So, some smartphone company illegally funds a security firm. What for? That, unfortunately, I could not find. I tried combing through their email history, but still nothing came up. All right. Oh, and this Devonir? It doesn't seem to exist anymore. In fact, there are hardly any records of it operating. I'm tempted to think it's a dummy corporation, Kaito-san. Huh. Now tell me that's not fishy. Indeed. Alas, that's about all I managed to recover. However, I do intend on looking into this Devonir a bit further. Seeing as there isn't much about it on the web, I'll likely have to do some extra digging. I appreciate all the help, Tsukumo. Of course. Just ping me if there's anything else you need. Guys, this is bad! It's Mikiko-san! Where is she? I don't know! The window was open when I got here! Mikiko, where the hell did you go? Is she seriously going after Crimson Lotus again? Oh, not good! You know something? Oh, uh, no? Numbnuts here doesn't know a damn thing. He can speak for himself. Now talk. Well, it's just that Mikiko-san might be... Sanda! Whatever she decides to do, we see it through to the end. That was the deal, wasn't it? Trying to turn Mikiko into a criminal? You know detectives are supposed to protect their clients, right? We are protecting our client. By not letting you interfere with her work. You know, Igarashi, I really can't stand the sight of you. I'll just have to beat the truth out of you then. I'd like to see you try. In fact... I've been dreaming of the day I get to cave in your skull! Let's go, Kaito! Get me! Ugh! <laughs> 
run off to. Talk! You really think you can save Mikiko-san? The guy who left her in the dust for the Matsugane family? Fuck you. Believe me, Kaito. Her anguish runs deeper and darker than you can possibly fathom. She's fueled by a hatred too hot to be contained. That is, until she kills her target. So what do you know about Mikiko, huh? A lot, actually. Collecting June wasn't all she had us do. There was another thing she asked us to look into. Which is how we learned of suffering that'd push anybody over the edge. Tell me. I'll ask you again. Do you really think you can save Mikiko-san? You got the balls to face the misery she's going through and accept what she's become? My mind's already made up. I'm gonna save Mikiko. Don't give a rat's ass if I die trying. Well said. Then let's go. Huh? Go where? To Ijincho, Yokohama. I'll fill you in on the drive. Any unfinished business you have, go take care of it now. いらっしゃいませ
。ありがとうございました。いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございます。Don't worry, she got out all right. Turns out she never killed anyone either. What do you mean? Whew, that's good news. Glad to hear my mom's not a killer. We still don't know who the culprit is, though. And I'm running short on leads. Wait, then where is mom now? About that, she's still got some stuff to take care of. But、uh, she said she'll be back once it's all handled. Um, yeah. What kind of stuff would that be? Hmm.、Uh, that I don't know. Maybe shopping. Shopping? Now? <sighs> okay then. So, what are your plans? Actually, June. You and I are gonna hang for a bit. We are. Yeah. After all you've been through looking for your mom, I figure we could both use a break. Grand tour of Kamurocho sound good? <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's do it. Then let's hit the streets. Okay.
workout in at least. Ah, gentlemen, you're back. Yeah, just thought I'd check in. So we're dealing with a serial murderer targeting the young business elite in Kamurocho. Would revenge against Crimson Lotus for the Natsume arson be part of that motive? Not sure. But I'm gonna tap Igarashi's brain in a bit. He seems to know a lot about it. I see. What about you? You gonna be here in town a while? Yes. At least until Mikiko-san comes back. Why don't you head on back to your place in Chiba? You can leave the rest to me. I can't. Uh, there are still some things I have to do. Oh yeah? Like, get a happy ending? What? I, don't be ridiculous! I, how do you even know what that is? I mean, I have been in Kamrocho a while now. <sighs> Dear me. What exactly is this town teaching our youth? Yo, Hoshino-kun. Flying solo today? Yeah, and Saori-san's gone out too. Oh? Who's this young man, Kaito-san? He's a client. Been looking for his mom. Wow. I'm impressed you came to make this request on your own. <laughs> Even brought my own payment. A 20 million yen watch. 20 million? You're joking, right? Seems to be legit. His dad's the CEO of some huge venture company. Says he jacked it from his collection. Say, would you consider introducing me to your father? Does he need a legal consultant? Huh? Not the time, Hoshino-kun. <laughs> Sorry, just a little lawyer humor. <laughs> what the hell is that?
was nuts! <laughs> That's all you got? We going? Who's hitting you up? Takayuki Yagami. I call him Tak. He's my boss and, uh, sort of like a partner in the biz. Is he strong? Well, to an extent. But there's no way he could take me. I think. Whoa, he must be pretty tough, though, if you're working for him. Tough enough to count on in a pinch, yeah. I'll introduce you when I get the chance. Man, imagine seeing Kaito's boss in action. Sounds awesome. Lead up, Kaito! Picking nuts. fights you can't win. All, right. All finished up on your end, Kaito? Yo, look out! Don't worry, he won't bite. Turns out your mom asked this bum to look after you. Yeah, right. Like I'd ever buy that. Freaking way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Didn't know you were Mikiko's kid when this all started. You tried to kidnap me on multiple occasions. By force! I hope you get struck by lightning! I was only doing my job. You should have just came along quietly. Seriously? Who'd be dumb enough to just go along with some shady Yakuza? You even have a brain in your head? Well, of course I do. You're the brainless one. All right, kids, settle down. Senda, don't we have places to be? Ah, right. The boss is waiting. You ready, Kaito? Good to go. Okay, let's hit the road. Oh, but the kid's gotta stay. Boss wants to talk mano a mano. That right. What? Why can't I come with? Because I said so, twerp. <sighs> Jerk. Be that way. June, just chill in my office and I'll get you a souvenir. Sound good? <sighs> Fine. Oh, and by the way, Mom's not really out shopping, is she? You'll bring her back, right? You bet. Okay. Then I'm gonna hold you to that. Make sure nothing bad happens to her. Got it? That's a promise. You'll see her again real soon. Remember! You promised! God, what an annoying little punk. Cocky as hell, too. 
<laughs> Damn right. So, Igarashi, why Jincho? Wasn't everything going down in Kamurocho? It just so happens that Rhizome, the precursor to Crimson Lotus, is having a reunion today. The venue's a hotel in Ijincho. And every founding member of that group will be there. At least the ones who are still alive. I'm guessing Mikiko wants every last one of them dead, doesn't she? Uh-huh. On top of that, her final target's also planning to show. The one she wants dead the most. You mean, outside of Crimson Lotus? Who? The one going around killing the founders of Crimson Lotus before she can. What the hell are you talking about? Why'd Mikiko want to take out who's ever killing her enemies? They've got a common goal, don't they? Hell, you're a detective. Try using that old noggin of yours, why don't you? Primitive as you are, I'm sure you can piece it together, knowing what you know. Plus, Ichin chose an hour away. How about we make like detectives and go over what we know? Yeah, sounds a bit too buddy-buddy for me. Besides, I'm a punch-first-go-over-shit-later kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. However, if you were to, say, arrive at the truth on your own, then no one breaks confidentiality. Fine, fine, I'll bite. So, a real killer, huh? Huh. There is one thing that's been bugging me. That security company owner, Ashizaki. His office was set on fire. But the point of burning the place wasn't to kill him. After all, he was shot up on the roof. So the killer must have torched it for another reason. Oh, starting with the motive. Not bad. Go on. So there's our problem. Why would the killer want to burn the office? I'm thinking. There was some evidence that would incriminate the killer. So they burned the place to get rid of it. Hmm. Interesting. And? I think I know just what the killer was trying to hide. I asked a buddy of mine to pull the data from a burnt hard drive I picked up at the scene. What he found were records of illegal wire transfers to the security company. And the company sending the cash was a smartphone app developer that isn't around anymore. I'd wager the killer would want to have these records erased. Hey, you're good. Didn't think you'd get your hands on those. By the way, that smartphone app company... You're talking about Devonir, I assume. Okay, how the hell do you know? It was thanks to Mikiko-san, really. She requested we look into a certain someone. Over the course of our investigation, we learned about a dummy company called Devonir. And, as you can guess, Devonir was created as a front for this certain someone. He used it to directly employ Crimson Lotus. Cover-ups, the customer service. They handled all sorts of trickier-than-usual jobs. So you're saying this guy's the one who's been killing off the Crimson Lotus founders? That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, who could it be? Here's a hint. Miki Gosan approached us anonymously. Why do you think she'd do that? Well... You guys could have broken confidentiality, and let it slip that she was alive, right? After all, her plan was to take out Crimson Lotus without leaving a trace. 
Sure, but that's just one reason. There's someone aside from Crimson Lotus who she doesn't want knowing she's alive. As a matter of fact, Mikigo-san never even contacted this person about it. Even though you'd think this would be the first person she'd run to after getting her memories back. Uh, wait a goddamn minute. All coming together. Joya Sadamoto? You're saying he's the one killing the founders of Crimson Lotus? Yep, you got it. And Mikiko-san has the same idea. What? So then, he was trying to erase his ties with Crimson Lotus? No. No, hang on. Crimson Lotus's founders were the ones who set fire to Mikiko's family's house. Why the hell would Sadamoto have connections with the guys who burned his wife's family alive? Oh, so you picked up on that. Then you'll like this next bit. Sadamoto's dummy company, Devonir. It had records from 17 years ago of illicit wire transfers to Ashizaki's security company. Know what that means? Yeah, I figured that out too. Actually, it's weird. 17 years is way before Mikiko and Sadamoto got married. But Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus were connected back then, right? So what the hell's going on? Just think of it like this. The Natsume family arson falls under questionable ties between Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus. But that would be... Oh, that's crazy! Sadamoto was involved in the arson? Bingo. What happened two years ago was Mikiko-san learned the truth. And Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus tried to silence her. <laughs> All right, Higurashi. No more guessing games. Just who the hell is Kyoya Sadamoto, really? The fucking devil. The type who'd make a Yakuza piss himself. The devil? How so? It all started with Raizo, an event club Kenmochi started during his college days. Raizo was like any other event group. You get together with friends, throw parties, go on live tours, and make a little cash. Guess they weren't making much back then. Then enters Kyoya Sadamoto a business admin major at the same college. He started showing up as their advisor and turned everything around. They all ate up Sadamoto's words and expanded their services into some pretty gray territory. Since Sadamoto considered himself their advisor, he wasn't officially part of the group. But his talent, his accomplishments, and charisma had them wrapped around his finger. That Rhizome bunch went on to found Crimson Lotus? Yeah, mainly around Kenmochi. Sadamoto already started his own business as a student. By the time he graduated, he was asking Crimson Lotus to do his dirty work. On the outside, he ran his business like some typical ambitious startup. But I'm sure he had guys coming after him. Probably made himself lots of enemies. It's what happens when you straddle both sides of the law. I bet it wasn't uncommon for him to deal with unhappy customers. Yes, it must have been convenient having his own personal cleanup crew. Bet your ass it was. Sadamoto's company saw steady growth because of it. But eventually, that growth started to fizzle out. What was once a promising startup with tons of investment capital found itself in dire straits. That's when he set his sights on Mikiko-san's parents, the Natsumes. When did she figure out where her husband really was? About two years ago, 
Satomoto got hammered. Rare for him. And fell asleep in his study with the computer on. That's when she stumbled upon his email exchange with Kenmochi. Of course, that set off alarms in her head, so she dug through more of his inbox. It wasn't long before she knew the ugly truth. But then Satomoto woke up. When he realized what she saw, he got violent. I doubt Mikiko would go down easy to some pencil-pushing civvy. Well, it turns out she did go down easy. We're talking about a guy who deals in the criminal underworld. He's very likely accustomed to using force. Then, what happened after Mikiko got attacked? She said her memories got fuzzy after that. She was probably drugged. And Satomoto had Crimson Lotus clean up his mess. So you're saying you know for sure Satomoto had a hand in the arson? Yes. Though it'd be more accurate to say he was the primary offender. It was about 15 years ago. Satomoto heard about a property development plan from Ken Mochi, who was a real estate broker at the time. Would have been a mighty lucrative deal, but the Natsumis were the only ones who wouldn't sell. Which led to threats and burning the place down. Classic land shark bullshit. Oh, if only it had stopped at that. Now listen. What makes Satomoto such a devil is what he did with the info Kenmochi brought him. He reworked it into a plan to fix all of his own company's problems in one fell swoop. How's that work? Kaito, the Natsume family was one of the richest in the area. If you include their property and stocks, they were worth tens of billions in assets. And since Satomoto was struggling with funds at the time, he decided to help himself to that fortune. But he couldn't pull that off in this... No way! Yeah. Marrying Mikiko-san was all part of his master plan. That's... insane! Clearly the man has a way with people. Call it an uncanny knack for charm. His college circles treat him like a guru. They say he's a living legend. Even his company seems to be under his spell. And as we know, Crimson Lotus was always ready and willing to take up any of his dirty jobs. So, you can see now how the Natsumes must have fallen for his honest young businessman facade. After he had the parents eating out of his palm, he discovered their younger daughter had a stalker, while the older one was dating a Yakuza. Wait, what do I have to do with this? You should know, Kaito. Satomoto used you too. Me? How the hell could Satomoto use me at any point in time? Well, when Mikiko-san first met him, she told him she was seeing someone and thinking of marriage. Now, how do you think he responded to it? Surprise, surprise. He actually supported it. He did? Well, he figured if you were serious about her, you'd quit the Yakuza. If you needed cash, he'd go convince her parents. If it was a lawyer you needed, he would have arranged one. He had lots of reasonable suggestions. He really offered all that? I'm sure Satomoto knew how hard it was for a Yakuza to leave the life. Not to mention, the Matsugane family had its own problems at the time, right? In any case, he knew you were locked in. And convinced Mikiko-san of the same. You both did exactly what he wanted. Then, once you were out of the picture, Satomoto made his move on Mikiko-san. I imagine her parents might have even encouraged it. And after the marriage was official, Satomoto simply had to bide his time until the Natsume house burned down and their fortune was his to claim. <gasps> Guy's a monster in human skin, right? And it seems his marriage was more of a shotgun wedding. 
I'm almost certain the kid was conceived as part of the plan to push her into marrying him. In other words, June was nothing more to Satomoto than a tool for making money. Oh. Oh. <sighs> I feel terrible for Mikiko-san and June. Gotta say, I'm impressed you did all that research. No wonder you called yourselves Tojo Clan R&D. Well, that's what happens when you know society at the back of your hand. The whole R&D thing might have been my idea. But it's only because we know our shit. <laughs> All right. So, how's it feel? That asshole Satomoto played you like a fiddle and tore you apart from the woman you loved. It doesn't matter. I made my choice. Ha! <laughs> That's the lamest shit I ever heard. I thought you'd blow a fuse. That said, I'll feel a hell of a lot better if I can just clock him one time real good. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Go knock his goddamn lights out! So, this is the spot. Yeah, they do this reunion every year. And apparently Kyoya Satomoto shows up to everyone. All the surviving founders of Crimson Lotus are probably in here somewhere. I gotta go find Mikiko. Before she does something she can never take back. Receptionist. Guess you gotta have connections to get in. What's the plan, Kaito? I'm gonna roll the way a detective rolls. Meaning? By sneaking in with a disguise. You? Disguised as what? You're still gonna look older than anyone here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to mull that one over. This right here. Hmm. Oh, no, what have we prized, here? Oh, no, my prized possession. Did I drop it when I sat down earlier? Oh, and to think I spent all that money on it. Ah, oh well. Party's about to start. So whoever finds it can just keep it. So, if you need a hand from Senda, just ask. He'll do anything for Mikiko-san, I'm sure of it. Got it. Thanks. What's happening over here? I'm keeping watch in case Mikiko-san arrives. Gotcha. I guess there is a chance she'd pass by. Let me know if you need a hand, Kaito. 
Boss said I ought to help. Okay. Might take you up on that. Is this it? Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. This right here. Oh, oh, shit! I dropped the key to the back door! The smoking area? Dude, if they find out, they're gonna be pissed. Well, they haven't found out yet. Oh, man. What am I gonna do? Okay, okay, I'll help you find it. You have any idea where you might have dropped it at least? Uh, the first floor bathroom, I think? Or, uh, was it the second floor? Actually, it could have been the third. Okay, so it's in one of the bathrooms. What have we here? Let's see. Hmm. 
what have we here? Hey, where's the new guy? Hmm, probably in the smoking area. I saw him heading down there a minute ago. Ah, uh, really? He steps out for a cigarette when the party's about to start? T go get him, will ya? No way. That guy freaks me out, man. He looks like an ex-thug who can't seem to reintegrate into society. Besides, I, I don't have the key to the smoking area. You do it. <laughs> Hell no! He freaks me out too. I'm not equipped to deal with his type. Mm. Ah. Well, he's a responsible adult. I'm sure he'll come back once the party starts. Yeah, no need to bust our butts just to check on him. That's it? Man, I am beat! Last thing I want to do is serve people. And it's been nothing but punk kids all day. And they've all got some crap attitudes. Hey, you. You got a sec? Huh? Aren't you... Whoa. Is that you, Tashiro Kun? Kaito! Why the hell are you here? Why the hell are you a waiter? It's that bastard Yagami's fault. Talk? What are you talking about? For the past few years, I was a producer doing events for a solid company, and I was totally killing it! But thanks to Yagami coming around, the company heard about my fuck-ups and fired me! Well, I don't know all the details, but if you got out of it, it sounds like you got what you deserve, don't it? Shut up! This all started from you guys! The moment you ripped my favorite clothes off my body, my luck went straight down the shitter! Yeah, sorry about that. On that note, mind if I borrow those clothes for a bit? What? What the hell? You got some balls asking me that! I need it for... reasons. Come on, I'm not gonna keep it forever. Fuck that! Why don't you just strip down yourself? Huh? Why would I do that? Because I want you to feel the same humiliation I did. Now, if you're not gonna strip, I'll make you strip, dickhead! Whoa, hey, knock it off. I already said I was sorry, didn't I? Shut it! Do you even know how it feels to get your ass kicked and tossed out into the freezing December cold, butt naked? I won't rest until I strip you down to your bare junk! Better be ready! Fine, have it your way. An ass whooping it is. Come on.
excuse me. Mind if I have a word? I'm looking for someone. Ugh. Uh, ma'am? Hey, can't you see this is a bad time? I'm catching up with an old friend here. I'm awfully sorry, but it's about a very important guest. Oh, an important guest, you say? As in one of the Rhizome founders? Because if that's the case, I'd love to meet them. Oh, no, they aren't. Ah, well then can you go away now? If you please, it's just... You're here! Sorry to bother you, but uh, have you seen this woman? Oh, her? Um, I think she was here earlier. Are you sure? Where is she now? Hang on, maybe I'm not remembering correctly. She didn't talk to anyone and left her seat pretty quickly. Got it. How about a man named Kyoya Sadamoto? Sadamoto-san? <laughs> the living legend! Oh, I've always wanted to meet him, but he said he had an emergency and couldn't make it. He can't make it? You're positive? Yes. Apparently, he has a meeting he simply can't miss. His schedule is always packed every single day. But I suppose that's just how it is. What do you mean I can't get in? Uh, it's just that Amina Masuda-sama has already checked in. And I keep telling you, I'm Amina Masuda! How could I have already checked myself in? Something the matter, ma'am? Well, I literally just got here, but this bonehead of a receptionist says I'm already checked in! So, Masuda-san is already inside the venue. Y you're sure there's no mistake? Yes, I even checked the list. This woman, the one who said she was Masuda, is this her? Oh, yes, that's the one. She was gorgeous. I knew it. Where did she go? Well, she entered the venue. Oh, but just after that, she came out and made her way to the restrooms. The restrooms, huh? Thank you. Uh, uh, wait! What about me?
Hey! No. Uh, oh. Uh. Are you still with me? What happened? Oh, some woman came in out of nowhere and attacked me. And was that woman Mikiko Sadamoto? Yeah, that's right. But how? Who are you? Where'd she go? She... she was looking for Kyoya-san. Kyoya Sadamoto? But I heard he couldn't make it. No. He was scheduled to appear as a surprise guest. He was in the green room earlier, but he went up to the roof for a smoke. And then Mikiko went up to the roof too? Yeah. Hey! Uh, may I help you? I'm very sorry, but there's an urgent issue I must attend to. Don't play dumb with me, Kaito. I know a rat when I see one. Why are you here? Well, I guess I gotta force my way through. And I'm kinda in a hurry, so I ain't pulling punches. Come on, boys! Let's get him! Need a hand? Let's clean them up quick! Appreciate it, fellas! Huh? What the hell do you think you're doing? I'll kill you! So, did you figure out where Mikiko-san is? Yeah. Looks like she chased Saramoto to the roof. We can't afford to get caught by them again. Let's climb up here. Oh, 
Oh, shit! Wait, aren't you... Damn it. We can't let him call for backup. We have to take him out, quick. They've got to be around here somewhere. Find them! Huh? Guess we're already Jincho's most wanted. Damn! How many of these guys are there? Get me! There should be a guest elevator somewhere around here. We can take that all the way to the top. Take this guy all the way to the top. There they are! Found them! God damn, they're still coming! Hey, Kaito! You go take care of Mikiko-san! Just leave these guys to us. We got this. Huh. You better, tough guy. We can take this many of them ourselves. I owe you one. Thanks. Uh, isn't this a little more than we can handle? Pipe down. Now let's do this!
All right, let's go. Right there. Playing hide and seek. Nowhere to run. You're dead. Come on.
can go! Stay back! Come near and I shoot! Come now, Mikiko. You would really shoot your husband? That's the only reason I'm here. Very well. Then perhaps let's settle down and talk this through. Talk? What is there to talk about? Well, try putting this all into perspective. Are you sure you want to kill me? Can you kill me? Oh, I've got an answer to that. <laughs> but what about our son? What would June think? Would he condone his mother's actions as a killer? Have you even considered the thought? <sighs> of course you have. Compassion comes naturally to you, and guilt enough to freeze you in your tracks. After all, that's what gives this woman her charm. Wouldn't you agree, Kaito-san? Sinister fuck! Unfortunately, nice people don't make money. Business opportunities are all around us. Most fail to seize them, let alone comprehend they're there. Why? It's simple. They're inefficient at drawing wealth to themselves quickly and competently. Instead, they sate themselves on worldly affairs and superficial relationships. They're worthless. So, you cut down your old pals and burned her family alive! They meant nothing to you! Precisely! You catch on quick. I like your potential. Now I'll admit the Natsume family ordeal was a risky choice. But the results really spoke for themselves. It was a brilliant idea, if I do say so myself. You human bastard! Julia! You think you'll get away with killing my parents? My sister? You're dying right here! Right now! How curious. You actually seem like you mean it. Well, at least you came prepared. Glad I took the steps to confirm that. Late, Ken Mochi. Uh, my bad, Kyochan. <laughs> Damn you, Sadamoto! Settle down. You move and June dies. Understand? <laughs> Can't move, can you? He takes after me, that's for sure. Never know when he'll catch his old man off guard. Seems I was right to discipline him the way I did. Asshole! That's your own son right there! Now then, Mikiko. The real party's about to begin. What? First, let's dispose of any unnecessary baggage. Shoot Kaito, and I will release June. No! <laughs> June! You okay, bud? I'm gonna help you out of this. Mochi, you still think Mikiko was the one taking down Crimson Lotus? Of course I do. The hell are you talking to me for? Because there's something you might want to know. Each time Mikiko went to take out your buddies, someone else had gone and done him in first. They were dead by the time she got there. Get out of here! With her memories back, and a plan to kill Crimson Lotus, Mikiko became a huge threat. Enough to scare the killer into action. And 
by killing his old pals. He could erase his dark ties and pin the crime on Mikiko in one fell swoop. The fuck are you yapping on about? Still don't get it? It's the guy standing next to you. Your legendary guru is a traitor. What? Hmm. I hear Sadamoto's been making the rounds on the media lately. Earned himself a reputation as a CEO in demand. It's why he can't afford having his connections to you guys surface. And on top of that, he needed to act fast to keep Mikiko from ever reaching out to you guys. What are you saying? Mikiko knows some dark shit about her husband's past. And Sadamoto didn't want you spotting any discrepancies between her truth and what he fed you. Had that happened, you probably would have gone after him yourself, Kenmoji. Fact is, Sadamoto was the one taking out Crimson Lotus, not Mikiko. Huh? But you said that already, didn't you? Uh, right, but that's not the point. There's a reason why Sadamoto started killing everyone now. After finding out his wife might still be alive, he realized he'd be in deep shit if she got in touch with you first. If that happened, there's a chance you'd learn conflicting facts about the Natsume family arson. Well, what's the goddamn conflict? You said it was an accident that Maho-chan and her parents were burned alive. Nobody was supposed to be home, right? Well, yeah. I was told they were on vacation. The place was supposed to be empty. Let me guess. Sadamoto gave the order. Told you nobody get hurt. So what? What are you getting at? Your guru made it loud and clear before you showed up. He said, the Natsume family ordeal was a risky choice, but the results really spoke for themselves. He knew Maho-chan and her parents were home that night, and he still had you burn the place down. No. Since you guys were just after the property, you had no reason to burn anyone to death. Even a hardened criminal might flinch at such an order, but Sadamoto's no ordinary thug. He wanted the Natsume's fortune for himself. And for his company to survive, he needed them to die. That's why he lied to you. After fixing up his own alibi. Bullshit. He's lying. Right, Jochan? chan Huh. You've hit quite the sore spot. Sadamoto. You only had me find Mikiko. So you could get to her before Crimson Lotus. But when I found her, you planned to lock her up and wipe out Crimson Lotus yourself. Then you would wait for the perfect time to finish her off and make it look like suicide. Sound about right? <laughs> I knew I liked your potential. Shujan! What's this guy saying? It's all lies, right? The night of the arson was Mahu-chan's birthday. <sighs> the Natsumes and Mahu-chan were big on wine, so I sent them a vintage Bordeaux to celebrate. After all, what's a million yen between friends? Chuchan! Meanwhile, I was enjoying dinner at a restaurant with my lovely wife. From there, I gave Maho-chan a call and wished her a happy birthday. She told me the wine was delicious. Even the Natsumes, who were notorious wine snobs, enjoyed it. I was worried my secret ingredient, sleeping pills, had altered the taste. But to my relief, it all turned out fine in the end. What? If it's any consolation, the Natsumes were dead asleep. I'm sure they went out painlessly. Julia, How could you? Hey! Jochan! It's just one of your jokes, right? Hmm... 
Should be any moment now. Delayed, I suppose. It's more like it. Finally, the stuff started kicking in. Big relief. Shoot shot! This is bad! The whole party's... Oh, oh no! <coughs> it appears to be taking a bit longer than I'd have liked. Okay, Sadamoto, tell me. What the hell did you do? Well... <laughs> I imagine this will go down as one of the deadliest dinners in history. Would you like to see? <laughs> Aren't I thoughtful? Excellent! I've just killed the final four members! A resounding success! You piece of shit! You poisoned their drinks? Yes, I used the slow-acting stuff. A quicker poison wouldn't do for taking out a large group at once. Anyone who gets a drink later on would find out it's poisoned and refuse to touch it. Even so, I was starting to worry I'd miscalculated since the effects took so long to show. Terribly sorry, Kenmochi. I'll hold a grand funeral for you, so try to rest in peace, okay? You even targeted innocent people! <laughs> I wouldn't say I targeted them. There was a designated table for everyone in Crimson Lotus. I can't help it if some non-members stopped by for a drink. So at that point, I would say it's on them. Besides, wouldn't it make more sense for a vengeful, hate-fueled killer to pile on a few extra casualties? The public is much more liable to eat up a dramatic story, after all. You're out of your goddamn mind! And now, Mikiko, the curtain rises on you. The time has come to kill Kaito. Do it, and I'll spare you and the boy. Why in the hell would I listen to you? Ah, right. Perhaps this scenario merits a bit of explanation. As for tonight, I'm technically not supposed to be here. Well, I was supposed to make a surprise appearance, but only a few people know. Anyway, I left your hair and fingerprints in the kitchen where the poison was prepared. And on the rooftop, your ex-lover's bullet-riddled corpse will be found. That'd be you, Kaito-san. On top of that, I've arranged it so a news leak will soon reveal Crimson Lotus as the masterminds behind the Natsume Arsi. As the story goes, you took the lives of each one out of vengeance. This party was held to clean up any stragglers. And when your old boyfriend caught wind of the whole affair, you gunned him down too. That is what the cops and the media will learn. It was you all along, my dear. <sighs> but I won't just leave you dry. Kill Kaito and I'll throw in a hundred million yen. You could use that to flee overseas with June and live a comfortable life. 
Though, I imagine that wouldn't appeal to you. How could you murder an innocent man? So, once Kaito's dead on the ground, I suggest you kill yourself as well. The hell? If you go through with it, I'll even add another hundred million for June. <laughs> At least I'm offering child support. More than a lot of fathers do. <laughs> now hurry up and shoot him! You were itching to kill someone! Weren't you? Take too long and June will be the one to die. <laughs> he really was the devil after all. I was naive. I'm so sorry. I dragged you into this mess. <laughs> Mikiko. It's okay. I'm here. Huh? Well, this changes things. Your little storyline just took a twist. What are you playing at? How about I rewrite this scenario? A dirtbag husband commits mass murder, then gets caught and tries to pin it on his wife. So a Yakuza steps in and puts him down. <gasps> I go to jail and it's happily ever after. Just stay out of this. You can't get blood on your hands. June needs you in his life. <clears throat> I can't imagine I'll miss at this range. <laughs> you say that, but how else am I gonna get strong? Strong enough to protect the people I care about. You wanna get strong, June? Then focus on what's in here. Huh? What do you mean? Just keep that fire burning in your heart, and it'll all make sense one day. Come on! Sit up! 
Mom? Wait. Everything was a lie. Everything you've ever said to me was bullshit. Our marriage was bullshit. I guess you got what you wanted. I lived under the same roof with the monster who killed my family! My only sister! How does it feel right now? You calculate this too? Goddamn coward! Mickey, go! Don't do it! I should have ended this... a whole lot sooner. Nikiko. You do that, you'll regret it. You'll be losing something precious. <laughs> wanted revenge. It nearly killed me. I realized what was precious was right in front of me. But then I went down the path of vengeance for the boss of the Matsukane family. And now, here you are, doing the same thing. Why, Mom? What happens now? You're gonna get yourself locked up? <laughs> You're leaving me again? What was it you said? Everything was a lie! Was I a lie too? Ha <laughs> ha 
Again! <laughs> you suck, you son Shut it! I'm letting you win, you know. Let's run it back. Okay, but I'm still kicking your butt. Hey! Kaito Onaki! <laughs> Don't push yourself too hard yet. You came in here pretty banged up. You've been out for three days. That long. Huh? Where's Mikiko? Is she okay? Yeah. Mom was looking after you the entire time. She nearly passed out on her feet. When she said she was feeling lightheaded, Shirakaba-san took her to get some rest. You didn't want to go with your mom? Nah. I'm cool right here. And higashi san has been keeping me company, too. Ah, oh, well, I had time to kill, so... And... Sadamoto? Uh... He, uh... didn't make it. He didn't. Oh, those are from Yagami. He's back from his business trip. He came by earlier, but saw you were out like a rock. That put him at ease, so he left this and went home. <laughs> nice touch. <sighs> <sighs> Easy now, Aniki. It's no problem. No problem, huh? You're practically split at the seams. I think I'll hold together just fine. Uh-huh. Just try to stay out of trouble, okay? June, you free to talk? Oh, uh, sure. How are you holding up? Fine, I guess. You know, my old man wasn't the greatest either. In fact, he was a nasty drunk. Yeah? Yep. He barely worked, used up our money on booze, and every swiggy took men a swing at his family. I couldn't live in a home like that. So, I ran away. Then, I got kicked out of school, and after doing some more dumb shit, I ended up in juvie. After that, it was clear what kind of life I had coming. Huh. No kidding. Growing up, I wish the old bastard would just drop dead. Deep down, I took out all my problems on him. He was why my life turned out fucked up. But in reality, those fuck-ups were mine alone. Huh. Sure. My pops was a no-good loser who destroyed himself with alcohol. But when I got word he died... For some reason, all I could think of were the few good times we had. Huh? <laughs> Stupid, right? Why? After hating his guts my whole life. <sighs> Sorry. I know this ain't making it easier. <sighs> Actually, there was this one time my dad took me out for a drive. <sighs> Thinking back, maybe he just felt like cruising around in his brand new car. But he asked me if there was anywhere I wanted to go. And then he took me far away just so I could see the ocean. <laughs> June. 
Take it slow, okay? You don't have to worry about me. I'm fine now. For real. You sure? <laughs> you know what, Kaito? I've been thinking. I never really wanted to be a Yakuza. It was something different all along. Oh, yeah? And what would that be? Not a detective. I want to be the kind of guy you can depend on. Someone who's strong. Someone like you, man. So don't worry. As much as it hurts, I'll be okay. Jun, I know it's tough. I can take it. And besides, I'm not a kid anymore. What are you gonna do now? Go see your mom at Shirakaba-san's place? Yeah, someone's gotta go pick her up. Oh, speaking of, Shirakaba-san asked me to give you a letter when you woke up. A letter? For what? You know. Kaito-san, as I've mentioned before, I intend to propose to Mikiko-san. I won't do it right away. She and her son need time to process. But I will say this. If you still have any feelings for Mikiko-san, I suggest you pay me a visit. Yasutaka Shirakaba. What a guy. So, what's it say? Hmm. I think it's a challenge. And that means what exactly? Actually, June, I'll come see Mikiko with you. You sure? I can get there myself just fine. Trust me, I know. Huh. Okay then. Hey, you coming or not? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Jun? And Masahoro-san? Hey, yeah. Uh... I told him I could get here myself, but nope, he insisted on tagging along. Did you? Well... Thanks for seeing him off. Uh, don't mention it. I, uh, wanted to see you too. Oh, really? So, we're finally getting to sit and talk. We sure are. Were you okay? Well, I mean, maybe that's a weird thing to ask someone who had amnesia. <laughs> maybe a little. I'm very happy for you, June. You got to go on an adventure with your hero. Oh, uh... Guess so. You've gotten so strong since I last saw you. 
Remember how you armlocked that one jerk into submission? Yeah. I'm lucky to have learned that from my mom. So, Mikiko, what's your next move? What do you mean? Well, I was wondering about your living situation. I figure it's tough staying in that house after everything. Yeah, you got that right. What am I gonna do? I haven't given it much thought yet, but... But... Yeah, so... Shirakaba-san mentioned he'd take June and me on vacation. Just the three of us. Vacation? Uh, where to? He said, anywhere in the world, anywhere at all, for as long as you like. <laughs> I'm sure he was just kidding. Oh. Okay, then. I, I don't think he was joking. That dude's a doctor. He looks pretty loaded. <laughs> Unlike Mr. X Yakuza here. Watch it, kid. Uh, Mikiko-san, why don't we head inside and watch a movie? <sighs> I read your letter. So then, what are you here to do? What am I... Well... <sighs> Mikiko-san, wait right there, please. Okay. I've been saving something for you. Huh? Mikiko-san, will you... Hold it! What is it? Uh, well... Actually, I'm here to take Mikiko home. Take her home? Where? To your dirty little hovel of an apartment? Yeah, if that's okay with her. And my apartment's tidy as hell, as a matter of fact. I clean up every now and then. <laughs> Kaito-san, I understand what you're feeling. But this is the one thing I can't give up on, no matter what you say. I hear you. Let's talk this out. Oh, we won't be doing any talking. Huh? Then what are we doing? Settling this like the men of old. With our fists! What? Oh, come on. You trying to have a duel in this day and age? What about how Mikiko feels? This fight is for my feelings, Kaito-san. I told you from the beginning I was giving this my all, didn't I? Man... Mikiko-san will never share her heart with me. I've already accepted that. However... If I can best you, the one she sees as her hero... Then perhaps... There's a chance she'll acknowledge me. So please... Give me this, Kaito-san! When you put it that way, fine. But don't blame me if you get hurt. You needn't worry about that. Where the hell do you get so beefy? 
After those thugs came, I vowed to do whatever it takes to get stronger. To build myself into a new person. One who would never let harm come to Mikiko-san. So these past two years, I've made the gym my second home. And on top of that, I've practiced every form of martial art available to me. What I've learned is this. With the insurmountable will to protect the ones you love, even a frail physician can rise up and become stronger than any threat that comes knocking. All right then. You made your point. Guess we're throwing down. Let's do this, Shirakawa! Come! Kaito-san!
seems you've had enough. We squared up now? Yeah. Now it's out of my system. Thank you. <sighs> Why do men have to be so primitive? So then, where do we go from here? Uh... Didn't you say you were taking me back home? Uh... Um... Guess I did. said my place was clean and all. Sorry. That was a big lie. Even on a good day, it's about as clean as a farmhouse. And the bathroom's moldy. Yeah? And I'm flat broke. Seriously? Being a detective doesn't always pay the bills. Pretty often, I'll be months behind rent. Sometimes I can't even afford dinner. Well, you're gonna have to fix that, aren't you? I'll try. Will you still join me? Gladly.